Welcome back to Drive Away from the Fires. It is <laughs> Collider Live, Jeez. ladies and gentlemen. Collider, it is, hell. It, yeah. Listen, man, this is a nutty, nutty time. We'll talk about that in just a second. But we are going to introduce the crew here that is sitting at the table. This isn't a desk. Uh, first and foremost, he is the man who likes to have zombies in the booth with him while everyone else is talking. That was so good. Mr. Cody Hall. Hello, Hi, Cody. Cody. Is How Alex there? Doing? Nope. No. Right, he bailed He's on dead. You. Oh, is he? He's zombie. Yeah. He was eating. Happy oh, eating. right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mark Riley is here. Uh, the queen of death, Dorina. Hello. Buenos right. dias. How is everyone? Happy Halloween week. Happy yeah. Halloween week. I saved you for last nice. because it is a bittersweet week, my friend. It um, is. Because both myself and Joshua Makuga. Actually. I know. What? Uh, oh, I'm going right. to be here the week after. You now. are. They yeah, pushed my that. production back one week. Okay, so well, so, yeah. either way. Well, then fuck you then. It's yeah. bitter, uh, it is a bittersweet. <laughs> you know. It is bittersweet. Either way, leave it for we'll, Christian Harloff. Week. Josh McCuga will be here next week, apparently. Breaking yeah. news, everybody. <laughs> um, my, But me, myself, this person sitting here in this dumb hat. Um, I like this hat. You wear uh, it all the time. I wear it all the time. It looks I like good on you. Th- thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I, is that still a brand? I think so. Yeah, they are. Yeah, okay. they are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it, but I like the hat. What are you going to do? This is my last week at Collider. It has been a journey and a half. Uh, man, man. I posted out this morning that uh, I had a uh, I had a great run here. It was a lot of fun. Made some great friends. Very proud of my work. Uh, I thank Mark Fernandez, the entire crew, the production crew. Um, everybody here, this is going to be a fun, fun week. So let's uh, let us celebrate and, and and nothing else because this show will will go on, uh, even though I mean, Makuga will be uh, you'll be around. Yeah. It, when you're in when you're in L. A. I just found out on Friday, like right after we wrap Collider Live, I got a text from the showrunner. He's like, "Can you talk?" And so so I think we're going to move production back a week because it it was very uh, like rushed. No, no, no. It was it was a very um, call, like. Confident that we could get this ready in time, but I mean, they just greenlit the show like three weeks ago. Right. And in order to get the show going, I think they realized how much work it was going to take, so they're going to push it back a week. And then I f- pretty much figured out my schedule that like I'm going to be gone for like three weeks at a time, so basically all the way up until Christmas. And then, so like, there will be a couple days here and there uh, that I will yeah. be on Collider Live, but for the most part, uh, my production schedule is going to be very tight. Very tight. So, yeah. what, what would you say if you're go- if you're looking to March? You'd say you get at least 10, 12 episodes in. Yeah, I would say yeah, like two weeks worth of episodes. That's probably. good. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. not bad. But yeah. the but the so do we? You, we don't we don't have an announcement as far as who's going to be on yeah. next week. Yeah, okay, we're still, still working on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well. Anyway, so we're going to have some fun this week. Um, and How many years were you at Collider? No. Well, Collider, Collider was past. four because 2015 was mm-hmm. when AMC, uh, so c- collectively around six. Okay. When you look at uh, like 2013 was really when I started doing AMC. What mm-hmm. about you, Josh? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't on AMC ever. Yeah. Uh, it was Collider by the time I got here, but it was like freshly Collider. I think it was only like three yeah. months into Collider. So you guys all came in around the same time? Yeah, pretty I came much. Yeah, so in February of 2016. Yes, okay. because I actually watched the announcement video uh, last night, actually, when... Uh, I don't know, it's one of those recommended videos that popped oh, yeah. up, right? And, um, and it was right when uh, Complex had bought... Uh, you know, from AMC and AMC mm-hmm. stayed on as a sponsor, but it was a, it was a really cool announcement. It was like we all it was you know it was myself and Campion, uh, the big man Schnepp and Ellis, and we all uh, it, it was just a, it was it was fun. It was an, it was a start of a new a new dawn, right. mm-hmm. um, and uh, and and it has carried on over. And there's a lot of the sh- you know movie talk still going on, and and then this show obviously was born. Jedi Council, by the way, Jedi Council will still be going on. Ken Napsok, the great Ken Napsok, will be taking over. Um, and yeah, so that'll be that'll be something that my last show for councils on Thursday. Yeah, and that'll also be um, that'll be it'll be interesting because mm-hmm. you know it's like both the, the show and, and that show, two shows that I kind of came up with, wanted to see what we could do, and um, and they both are going to flourish uh in into the new horizon so it's going to be um it's it's going to be fun it's going to be a, a strange week but yeah. a fun week mm-hmm. yeah. do we have any guesses can, not really no can mm-hmm. we celebrate on friday and like slime you or something <laughs> slime yeah. Yeah. Uh, nah, i'm good i got kids um but, but i'll tell you that I mean, let them slime you yeah old well, i'm sure i'll get hit in the head with a tomato but yeah. I, that, that that kid that kid man the the, the little one what diva is is not even appropriate mm-hmm. like this even this morning uh, Maisie, you want you want uh, you want fruit? No. How about a banana? No. <laughs> All right. 
right? Forget it. Eat your fucking ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that was it. As my brother says, you know, he's got three, a fourth one on the way. And um, his three year old, he's like, I don't know. By the time she's 15, she's starting some mean girls cult and uh, ruining yeah. people's lives. I'm she's the diva. She's the diva. Uh, it, it's just like. I'm not surprised your relatives are divas. She, yeah. she looks. No, she goes, Stop it. Thank you. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. And I, oh, this is the best. So the other day, she would say this. I go, shh, shh. She goes, no, no me, shh. No me, shh. <laughs> she's like, what is shush, it? She's like, no me shush. Don't me shush. No, no me shush. shush. Okay. She's basically telling me, don't, don't tell her, don't, 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 tell her to, don't tell her to shush. I went, yeah. shh. No me shush. Okay. No me shush. <laughs> Two years old. Anytime you're like, let's move on. I'm like, no, no me shush. shush. Yeah. No me shush. Stop it during it. No me shush. No me shush. Uh, like your shirt. Love Thank your shirt. You. Looking really good. Very They're bogus underrated journey. sequel. I got to tell you, I got to watch it again. Because I think because I love the first one so much that it, it switches tone just a little bit. For those listening, we're talking about Bill Bog- and Ted. Yes, bogus, bogus journey. Yeah, bogus yes. journey. And great it's, show by, uh, great, jo- great uh, shirt by Mondo. Shirt. I like that show. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got to watch it again. I think because I was looking at the list, the, the sequels list. Did you see this greatest sequels by Collider? Bad Boys 2 is obviously number no, one. It's not in there. Yet. Um, I had to is tell it you in there? It, it, Bogus Journey? No, no, no. Oh, but what I should have, be. What I have to tell you? No, it's not better than the first one. It's not. Oh, is it better these, than these the first? The, 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 the oh, sequ- I thought just great. No, no. The, the, the list. Guess. The list. Empire. Is, that's definitely in there. Well, yeah. The list. Godfather two. Uh, yeah. we, Wrath of Khan. We're, we're gonna have all these conversations <laughs> in just a second because that's what we do. You set up the topic and then you get into the meeting. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, Gremlins two. If you guys. List. Yes, but this. You, you were, can, actually, Cody, can you bring up the list? It's the. It's the greatest sequels that are better than the first. Normally, these lists, I usually have issues with. Issues. I think I only have issues with like two of them. Nice. I, as I'm going through it, I said, Oh, that are what? better than the original, better not than the original. just good All right, sequels. So, let's okay. do this. so this, is, this, this, is, this is the Collider list, and you can see Evil this on Evil Dead Collider. 2 is correct. I agree with Evil Dead 2. So For Evil sure. Dead 2 is the first one up there. Anybody I disagree on this one? I cannot contribute to this. No, nope. okay, fine. Yep. Dude, you uh, would like the Evil Dead. Nah, have you seen the Evil Dead movie? Before no, Sunset, good. I can't contribute on this one. That one's good. also great. It's it's good. Good. That whole trilogy is incredible. Okay, great. So Toy Story 2, I can see the argument for it, though. I can see the argument. It's not like so – it's not like you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but there was a couple crazy ones on this list, but this is not a you crazy. One. Wow. Oh, look. Good wow. job, whoever did wow. that. That's a crazy Fuck one. yeah. Wow. Batman Returns. I, I love Batman, Batman, Batman Returns, Returns yes. but that is no. Yes, yes. 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 You guys yeah. are so wrong. Who, who wrote this? Because they're correct. But I'll tell you what, they started off. No, it wasn't McElroy. I think yeah. it's actually Chip Witted. But, uh, but to, to his credit. Did you guys see my custom, by the way? Yeah, it was weekend? great. So, yeah. Riley, move your head a little bit. He's, it says, maybe it's sacrilege to say that Batman Returns is better than Tim Burton's admittedly groundbreaking 89 film, but it's more short, more cohesive, and more crazy film than its predecessor. Correct. I don't disagree with that statement. Statement, the but, crazy part, I guess. Yeah, but I, I it's, and more, it's, it's and not just, it's just more awesome. Yeah, but I, that's the first one I disagree with. I know that Doreen is not going. She's the only one on the. On, Why did you dress as Catwoman this weekend? I yeah. did. Nice. You didn't see a photo. I did. I posted it, 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 it on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. It's I, I did the Selena Kyle at the end where she's about to All messed up kiss up Christopher hair. Walken yeah. and be like, "How about a kiss, Sandy Claus?" Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, cool. Harry Potter yeah. and the Prisoner asking about absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. this one. It's absolutely. That's the best Harry Potter movie. That's the third one. That's the third one. but still, it's still a sequel. This is. This one I can see people saying a Christmas vacation. Ooh, I can see. Ooh, I know this, it's, it's this hard. This one gets me. Hold it's on. hard because <laughs> yeah, because the, the original vacation is like one of my favorite comedies it's, of all time. But Christmas not. Vacation's really good. It, it's not. A, although I love Christmas Vacation, it's my number one Christmas movie. But it can't be better than Vacation. It is. See, is I, it? I, a lot no, of people feel that no. way. It is. Oh yes. This, 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 Who did this list? I, I, They're I awesome. No, it's, Scott it's a bunch of different Scott people. Scott Mance. Gremlins. Gremlins too. No. Yes. No. They're two different. They're different movies. They're different movies. It's bonkers. Yes, I know. That's why it's not better than Gremlins. Look, an actual here's movie. the thing. I grew up thinking Gremlins is the fir- the best one, and it, it might be the best Gremlins movie as to like what the Gremlins are. But the second one is so different, it is. and it's based. And Joe Dante basically ended up making a parody. That's exactly what it says. Of, yes. of a yeah, sequel. That's exactly so that's, what it says. But that's why it's so great. Yeah, but I don't think it's better than the first one. That's it's, that's what the, that's yeah. what the, there's, you're, there's two different right. arguments here. It's whether or not you think that the second one is a good movie, and for what it's aiming for on the satire side right. of it, I can't disagree that what it's going. I just don't like that because when you compare it to what the first First one was where it was almost like a horror film. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, like a. It, it, it's but, not better than the first one. It, well, it's and maybe it's better in the sense of like what there's no sequels like that out there, right? Like it's a very unique sequel comparatively because it was so different than the first. I, I also agree it's very different, and they went for something different. And they achieved what they were right. going for. I just don't think it's better than the first. Movie. I mean, uh, it has a spider gremlin and, and yeah. they play me, Slayer's and Angel with, of Death. Gremlins, gremlins too lipstick. feels like so, like a Kentucky okay. Fried movie, yeah. like a, 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 a system yes. of vignettes yes. that became yeah. this weird parody. Yeah, I agree. And I don't like it. Yeah. Like the fried part. 
of the oh, chicken yes. that's really yes. good. This I agree. Yeah. I think everybody agrees with this. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So, so far, you see what I'm saying? So far, this list is, yeah. is pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, the Hunger Games Catching Fire, I yeah. completely agree with. Yep. I think I, I think they missed the mark. On, now, the book, the book, I think the first one's better. Yes. But they missed the mark the, Gary Ross Me did too. in the first. Me too. Uh, yeah, I agree. Book. I yeah. agree. Terminator 2 Judgment yeah. Day. I know Ooh. a lot of people a lot of people will feel say this that, way, yeah. but I, the it, first one to me is is my yeah, favorite, but I get same. it. Mine too. But Mine I get too. it. But Talk I still love the second one. Yes. It's, yeah. so, it's so good. For me, I prefer the second one because I prefer like the bigger action yeah, movie. Right, mm-hmm. right. That makes and sense. I, yeah. But I get it's listen, more Terminator, commercial. the first one. Well, and grand. it was totally. also really groundbreaking effects wise yeah. when it came out. I remember as a kid watching them make those those uh, special effects, and yeah. it's it's crazy yeah. 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 Like, a, for the time, especially. Yeah, yeah it's one a, of those movies that Spielberg saw the the, the technology and went Jurassic Park. We could probably mm-hmm. do that now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was at a Halloween party on uh, Saturday, and uh, there was a guy that was Terminator Two, and he and he like made the liquid metal gunshots on his. Oh, he was cool. the T two thousand. That's pretty sweet. There's yeah. another one I agree with. Skyfall. Yeah, a Skyfall to me is. I know a lot of people like the first one. I think the, it's the best of the Daniel Craig's. I do too. A lot of people yeah, like the first one I though. Think you Casino Royale. It is. I pr- prefer Casino Royale though. But yeah. I think Skyfall's a better movie. Well, it's yeah. more fun. Godfather Part Two. I think that's that's a yeah. that is a given for most people. Have um, you guys ever watched like the super cut that HBO does? I want to. I have Godfather? not of seen Godfather, it. where they put all three together. Wow. And they put it all in linear fashion. They chronologically like repurpose it. Here, no. So it opens awesome. with Godfather 2. Yes. Oh, oh that's yeah. awesome. I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. I mean, yeah. Right, of course. Yeah. Best yeah. Star Wars yeah. movie ever made. Now, this is for you guys because I don't I don't. I, they say Friday the 13th Part 2 <laughs> because they say that when most people think of Friday the 13th, this is Haley Fouch. Uh, this is friend. like when well, Christian goes on a I deep mean, dive on Star Wars. The thing yeah. about the Friday the 13th is that they're all suppo- they're all campy. But wait, this, movies, is, this, but is what she, this is what Haley says. Haley said when most people think of Friday the 13th, they usually think of Friday the 13th Part 2, right. the specter of Jason Voorhees hung over the first film. It was Pamela Voorhees, his mother, who tor- tormented the counselors of Camp Crystal Lake. She deemed responsible for her son's death. Friday the 13th set up the psychological uh, psychology of Jason Voorhees, but it was Part 2 that saw it fully unleashed mm-hmm. him and cemented the template that would come to, de- to define the series. Um, she says, don't get me wrong, Friday the 13th is a classic, but Part 2 birthed the horror I mean, icon. I, Mark, I understand you're the logic. a bigger uh, yeah. Friday the 13th fan than I am, so what do you think? I would go with uh, Friday the 13th, Part 4, the final chapter, uh, as the better, uh, better. Se- is sequel to Part 1 and even Part 2. But I see her argument where this is the first time you actually really saw the iconic Jason. It yeah. is. Jason yeah. and with the bag over his right. head, so it was very scary. It uh, had the remnants of, right. uh, it reminded you yeah. of the, I, the town uh, that dreaded sundown. Mm-hmm. And, McCool, you, can I set an a scene? This, can yeah. I set a scene for sure. you guys? Uh, I believe this was about fourth grade. Uh, okay. My buddy Justin uh, had a birthday party. Great dude. We I stayed friends all the way going. through uh, high school. And uh, his older brother, Pat, was like, hey, uh, you guys want to watch a scary movie? And I clearly uh, said no. He objected. <laughs> I object. But everybody else was like, yeah, let's watch a scary movie. So he put on uh, Friday the 13th Part 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what set my terror off oh. to oh. a new level, knowing full well I would never watch a scary movie ever, uh, <laughs> ever again that until was I, was actually, I was actually at a sleepover a, a about a year and a half later. To, part 2 yeah. c- destroyed me. Uh, and a couple years later, somebody played Children of the Corn at a oh, sleepover. Yeah. Well, that'll get me now. And uh, that one uh, so forever, yeah. I will never, like, there no, is, me. there were people, yeah. no, me shush. there were people that like, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love to own a farm. You're stupid. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. Yeah. Don't ever Don't do, do it. Don't do it. Uh, you know wait, what those do, you, corn? do you remember, like, you have images in, in your head as a, as a kid of watching that movie? Like, is there certain scenes that stayed with you and that's why you hate horror movies? I will tell you what image I do have is I refused to go upstairs when it was dark or downstairs when it was dark because I thought that white mask was going to appear out of somewhere and mm-hmm. kill me. Oh. Um, okay, <laughs> well, there you go. So, McCougar agrees. Uh, next yes. one is Mad Max Fury Road. I think this is accurate yes. also. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Sure. great movie. Absolutely. Freaking masterpiece. This is really that good. movie is, one, is, the, is the best one of the I whole watch thing, it again. series. Uh, X2, I yep. agree. Yep. Or better than I, now. I don't think it's the best X one movie out of say, all of them. This but is that out of the trilogy. But I think this is better than the first yes. one, though. That's, yeah. that, that's what this list is. This list is and which one is better than the first. So okay. even, oh. even when yeah, you're Friday, Friday the Thirteenth, okay. two is better than I guess. one. Yeah. So I mean, you could say the same thing. Do, do you guys agree that Days of Future Past is better than First Class? <sighs> no, I, I love First I, Class. You guys like First, first Class. Class is, first Class is my favorite. Me too. That. Okay, I love both. Yeah, but, I do too. But Days of Future Past, I was just surprised that yeah, it I prefer did such a it good over job. First Class. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I love it. First Class to me w- saved X Men. It saved it. It did. Yeah. So, yeah. It's yeah. so much fun. Dark Knight. Yes. yes. Of course. Of course. I think, uh, this is you don't even really have to talk about it. It's pretty. Yeah. It's it, it, Batman Begins is awesome. 
But the Dark Knight just did it just too much. It's like, God, it's like Godfather to, Part Two. Basically. Something's about to be a big nope for me. Yes, Superman Returns. This is, um, this, nope. This is, this is the, now. The the you want, you wait, want to get Matt? Oh. What is that counting as a sequel no, of? of 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 the Richard Superman Donner movies? Four. Is what? It, it's a sequel of Richard Donner movies, hundred percent. But if we're but, talking about the second one, then why isn't Superman Two on there? Listen, you want to hear this? Because this is this is will get you mad. Now, this is our buddy <laughs> Matt Kohlberg, who likes to get everybody mad. Here's here's the thing. Considering the dark the dark trajectory that the DC universe has taken, Superman Returns has aged incredibly well. I don't agree with that. Mm. While the movie certainly has its problems, especially in the third act, that I agree with, mm. from a plot perspective, it is far better than any of the Christopher Reeve movies. Uh, oh! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, now he, he does say Reeve is a better Superman than solid Brandon Ralph, uh, but those films range from nonsensical to atrocious. Uh, it's also it's three and four, sure. Take it easy. It's also a surprisingly <laughs> thoughtful look at post nine one one world, a nine eleven world, and uh, and and grappling with why we look to superheroes to save us. While dark and brooding is easy, Superman Returns aspires to be hopeful. And while the film does take some missteps, it's still the best Superman movie yet. Uh, best Superman movie yet. Now I disagree. <laughs> that statement wow. I disagree with wholeheartedly. Wow. However, I it's, think it, it has Parker Posey. I'll give you that. What I will <laughs> say about Goldberg in this, although I disagree, yeah, I know. Although I disagree with him, maybe ninety nine percent of the time, mm-hmm. I do respect the way he put together this his point. Right. Uh, totally. I don't respect. agree with any of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but I I see where he's coming from. The hopeful part of it, I agree with. You can because most people go for dark and brooding. This didn't. No. Um, but to say that I. I there is some silly stuff with the Donner. There's, uh, you haven't said this. I don't even know where what's I said the, it. What's the one where he goes onto the planet and the guy's green? My, four? Four? That's four. four, that, four. That's a horrible one. But, the... but one, and two, one and two are great. But what I will say, and I, don't, I just said this somewhere. I might have even said it on this show. I can't remember. But Superman is kind of a, a, a douche in <laughs> Superman 2. I love the movie. It's my, it's my favorite <laughs> Superman movie. But he's a douche. The Superman he, 2 Donner yes, movie is your favorite. I, okay. It's my favorite. Uh-huh. Out of all the Supermans, it's my favorite Superman movie. But he's a douche in the movie. He, right. he, gives, up, he, he gives up his superpowers for sex. Because he wants to get laid and he wants to, go, and he wants to go off and be with, yeah, with Lois. Which, which, which I get. Yeah. Right. But then, yeah. then, but, and he, but gets, then he gets his ass kicked by some trucker yeah. while he doesn't have any power. So he's a puss when, he doesn't, when he's an earthling. Right, right. right. So then he goes, ah, oh, shit. I gotta go. I gotta go beg for my hitchhike. Hitchhikes go. Not go because get, of that though, because the Kryptonians were Kryptonians taking comes out in, he Metropolis realizes and he needed he's his like, powers. Oh back. shit! Maybe I should have thought with my head yeah, and not right. my dick. Yeah, yeah. So why is it your favorite? Well, I'll tell all the other stuff in a second. But so then. He wins. He gets. He he, he kills. By the way, he kills. I was gonna bring up which that I'm point. all right with. He mm-hmm. kills. But then what does he do? Instead of being a good Superman, now he has his powers back. He goes and he kicks the shit out of the trucker because he can. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're, that's kind of a dick move. She, but she, just, that's why it's so funny that people were yeah. so pissed Teach at the Man the of lesson. Steel destruction or or him right. or uh, Henry Cavill Superman uh, snapping Zod's neck. Yeah, he, Spo- he, spoilers. I'm like, everybody. and but then when he snaps Zod's neck, he is. Clearly emotionally distraught. Screams. Where, Christopher Reeves yeah. just laughing. He, he's smiling Bro. when he when yeah. he punches Zod <laughs> in Superman <laughs> 2. He's like, when, bye, Zod. But, but yeah, him. he looks at him like this and he goes, <laughs> yeah. and me, throws him yeah. and he hits and he goes in the pit. Because to me, that, that was like the real, the first, even though Superman, the movie was, mm-hmm. was great, but it, this is the, the, was the first real superhero movie to me because you saw what Superman would do against other super villains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. it was terrifying. I remember I loved that movie as a mm-hmm. kid. It transferred over. Um I think that I yeah, I couldn't Superman returns it as can't. much as much as I like the airplane scene, which is great. Yeah. It is an incredibly dull film. It's it is pretty bad. So it, boring. It's because it's a rehash of a uh, it's it's it, kinda it, like it, it's kinda like what Force Awakens did a little bit of of okay, we're just he's trying to kind of be like Christopher Reeve. Brandon Routh is a good actor, but yeah. Yeah. but it's the same kind of it, story. Even even Kevin Spacey's Gene Hackman, uh, or sorry, even Kevin Spacey was playing Gene that. Hackman kind basically. Right. Like he, he was, was trying, doing, they're right. both good actors, but they were doing the but real here's estate. The biggest problem, Lex Luthor. The biggest problem, and you'll, I hope you agree with this as a Superman fan. You have to have the right dynamic between Lois and Clark and Superman. Absolutely, and Lois. that's why Dean Kane Bosworth and... was. Is a good good actress. A terrible choice for Lois. Lane. <laughs> yeah, she, she. There's there's nothing there's nothing to her. They don't have that chemistry. Or whatever. They have no chemistry whatsoever. And you put that up against what the whole 
basis Dude. of Donner is it, that's that's uh, Lois Lane and Margot Kidder and Christopher mm-hmm. Reeve are dynamic for yes. both for, for both of those movies. For that alone, this this is this is the silliest argument in this list. Even though I like the list, yeah, and I I really liked when uh, Superman stalks Lois by uh, you know going and using <laughs> oh, his right. supervision to oh, actually right. spy it's on her. Right. That was the moment where I went kid at the end. He's what are you doing? Yeah. Kate Bosworth yeah. should have just stayed in the wheelhouse of Blue Crush because that movie is yeah. fantastic. <laughs> Blue Crush uh, is great. <sighs> Part two is even better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Kind of, Thor Ragnarok, I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. I'm with it on yeah. that. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Falling if Dark World. It's probably the Thor best Ragn- Thor movie. If we're doing Thor Ragnarok, which is the third in the series, yeah. we can go back to Friday the 13th Part 2 and do Part 4. You Come can on. say four is better yeah. than one. And yeah. we can yeah. also well, say Captain yeah. American Civil War is way better than Winter Soldier. No, it is not. What? No, no, no. Which Civil War is way better. It's an, it's an argument uh, to be made. It's an argument to be made. Sure. I know that uh, my Marvel list yeah. is a total outlier yes. because mm-hmm. I did not like Winter Soldier. Oh wow! Mm. I'm, I'm not a fan of Winter Soldier really at all. I think oh, it's wow. one of the it's like wrong it's with still, me. It's still, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. it's fine. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, what, what, it's like it's the best MCU it movie. It's not. Uh, I, I would put it as my number three now, but it's, it used to be my, it's number not even it's my top, top there, my top five for yeah. sure. It's, a, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of the few MCU movies that but, I'm obsessed with because of how they flesh out their characters. Like yeah. it's one of the few MCU movies that Black Widow is actually a character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, can I tell you this is really funny. This just reminds me. So yesterday, my, my, my sister-in-law was visiting uh, for like two or three days, and she's on the phone, and, I, and I, no, they're not going to listen to this, but, uh, but she's on the phone with my brother-in-law, and she's like, I miss you, and I just want to tell you I love you. And the other side of the phone, he goes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, turn, I turn my wife, I go, real nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Yikes. And then she, she, but she, she, I told her, and then she told him, and he laughed. But it was, it was like, hey. Have you guys ever done that though, where somebody's like, "I love you," and you're like, "Thank you." Not my wife. Yeah, I've, not I've my said wife. that to, to your, lots of people. Your yeah. husband? Yeah, I mean, I'll oh. say I love you back sometimes, but right. then sometimes I'll be like, "Thanks." It's, so, it's the George Costanza line in Seinfeld. So He's like, "Have you ever told anybody you love them? I told a dog once. Yeah. Uh, so it's like accurate. Yeah, yeah. Let's get back to Ragnarok. I told here. the cheeseburger uh, oh, that's one. That's it. Oh, that's it. So Bad that Boys Two is not on the list. No, this list not. is bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You think two yeah. is better than one? Yes. Okay. I mean, hands down. I mean, it's night and day. Rocky if, Two. If Bad Boys yeah. Two is so good that they mention it in Hot Fuzz, you know that Bad Boys Two is the cool. superior film. Hot I, Fuzz is amazing. So I will, fantastic movie. But yes. what I will say is that list is pretty good. Um, yeah. For the it's most part, list. I mean, I, again, if you if, if there was if there was twelve it's movies on the list, I saw The Irishman. And, and, and? I, it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah I'll go ahead and review it now if you want. Um, yeah. yes. But I, t- well, I'll tell you first before that we got there, and um, and I took F- Finstock with me. Yeah. To the premiere, we went to the premiere. Yeah. Yes. I was and, gonna go, but I was on vacation. It was uh, so sad. Well, to we visit. well we went and we and we got there. We said we had nice seats and you I don't know really good seats. Did you see the video? The video. You're so close. To so him. Scorsese comes out and he does. So not too far from where I mean a little little farther back, but I could see. Scorsese is as close as I see Dorina here. And he gives a speech and he brings out everybody. But did you see the end of the video? Mm-mm. The Dagny, because they tell Martin, Martin Scorsese doesn't know where to go. So he goes, Do I go that way, that way? And everyone on our side is like, This way, this way, right? So he starts walking this way. And as he gets right next to Dagnino, uh, they say, Oh, you got to come back around. So Dagnino goes, Marty. You're the best, right? And then Marty fist bumps him. No, right? shit. yeah, that's how, you see it in the video. And yeah, he goes, so funny. hung and, out with Tom this and weekend. He, and he told me the whole story. Yeah, it was man. great. It was so, great. Well, did he tell you the thing about Pesci? Was he, yes, was, he sure did. Was Joe Pesci there too? Joe Pesci yes, was there. So this we, is we'll, insane. Well, we'll, we go to the after party. Who which is awesome. crushes it in this movie? Like, yeah, I'll get into the whole thing yeah, for you in a second. That's but great. but uh, it's not on Netflix for a couple more weeks. No, so, right? no, no. So, but it's not embargoed because they 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 did all the reviews and right. the festivals. Yeah. But anyway, so um, we go there and it was cool. I, so I saw Sebastian because you yeah. know Sebastian's a buddy of mine, and and I told him I said Dude, he's like he's like you saw the movie. And I go, yeah, I was there, I was there. And, he's like, and he goes, oh, what'd you think? And I go, I go, dude, it was like, uh, you were like the new Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Yeah. And, he's like, and he starts cracking, I'm laughing. So I got to catch up with him for a second. That was awesome. I'm proud of him, man, because he, he does really good. In the did you see too. what he just purchased? No. What did you A $20 million home somewhere? Yeah, of course. I mean, dude, it's, this guy's he posted it. Nice. It's crazy. He was, yeah. in, he was in, regardless of what you think of the movie, he was in Green Book. Which oh, was he's Oscar, great in Green Book. An Oscar winning movie, and, and he was really good. And he's yeah. in this. Yeah. He's killing he's it. Killing he's him. killing it. If anyway. you need an Italian guy with like attitude, you get Sebastian. It, it's a part. I won't, even, I won't go into the specifics, but it's so Sebastian. They go, he goes, what? Get the fuck out! <laughs> <laughs> so good. He's like, you wait, wait a minute. You want me to go and talk to Pesci? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> um, 
So anyway, so I saw him, got to hang out. I also ran into Leah Thompson because nice. you know, I did my interview yeah, with yeah. her, and and so I, she in the movie. She's not. She was okay. just there, but it was cool. it was awesome for like I don't know, for like 10, 15 minutes. It was me, Leah Thompson, and Dagnino, and Leah Thompson's friend. And I was like, this is fucking surreal. Yeah, yeah. I was hanging out there. Then I left early because I well, it wasn't early. The movie's three hours and like ten minutes. We I got to the party say, at eleven o'clock. I shit. left. I left at like twelve. Uh, twelve, which is that's that's like it's four late. in the morning for me. Dagnino stays. Of course. So Dagnino before the movie tells me he's like, Did you hear uh, you hear that story about like Pesci and uh, was at the country club and he. Ran out of like penne and rigatoni. Rigatoni. He's like, yeah. ran out of rigatoni and he's like, got pissed. He goes, I was there. Like, I told him the fucking story. Oh, okay. That was my story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, you hear about it? And, and so he's like, get yeah. ready. Because boy, cool up. <laughs> so, he, so he runs into Pesci and his bodyguards, Pesci's bodyguards, go to get Danino out. And Pesci goes, nah, and shoes him off. And Danino asks him about the rigatoni in the country club. <laughs> What did he say? Oh, I guess yeah. he goes. I guess he said it. What did he, what was what did he say to him? Uh, I, that was yeah, all I it, was, it was it was it was something along the lines of he walks up and goes, "Can you believe about that rigatoni thing that happened at the club?" <laughs> and Pesci uh, apparently goes, "Fuck it, yeah!" Can you fucking believe it? <laughs> um, so yeah, funny. he told the whole story uh, on well, our, on our he's, show he's, on he's Patreon. He's coming in on Wednesday. Yeah. He's coming in. On he's Wednesday, coming Wednesday, right? so, so we'll we'll ask, we can do the show on Wednesday. But he can't. Yeah. Well, so I think I I may have told this on this show, but I was the country club where he goes. Yeah, he plays at Lakeside. And Pesci yeah. walks in. Yeah. He's like, looks at all of us in suits. Like, what is this a fucking fashion show? Yeah. And he, walks, he just walks by. He's like, yeah. listen, if we're gonna I, get Pesci, that's the way to get Pesci. I missed Pesci. I missed him. Um, I will tell you that uh, the movie itself. is I was great. gonna say, what's it's, your review? So it's a long. It's a. It is a long film. Mm -hmm. Know that. Yes. And I think on. I think that was some of the complaint. I didn't have that complaint. The, the what I saw from the complaints from people that were at that we were talking to the after party was that it was they could have cut out like 15, 20 minutes, maybe. But the other argument counter argument. To that is when's the next time you're going to get Pacino, De Niro, and Together. Pesci into it. in a Scorsese movie? <laughs> yeah. So, and I think on Netflix it'll play more because you can pause it, do whatever you want to do right. with it. It is a classic Scorsese film. Awesome. It, it carries. It is just masterful storytelling from A to B. De Niro is great because, and they all, and you're worried because they've all played gangsters before. It's like, okay, well, this is this going to be the same Pesci? Pesci is a totally different type of That's gangster what I in heard, this movie, yeah. and he's so good in it. And he, and you buy him the de aging. There's only like one or two times you go, ah, it looks like a video game. For you, you can't even pick it up. Although you can't de age movement. There's a, right, yeah, right. there's there's it one there's awkward, one part right? where like young De Niro's like stomping a guy and it's like you see sixty or seventy year old De Niro doing it like ah you get over it. that was um, like uh, Samuel Jackson and Captain Marvel yeah yeah you, it, can, you, tell. you can tell but it, you get over it the it, the the use of music you're gonna love because okay. from the second you open up you go well this is a Scorsese film you can tell right Sounds away like the Stones yes. or something you, I don't want to run it okay. uh, and the, the long shots the way that he shoots things is just he just takes you through a, you know that when you're watching a good filmmaker even though you're very conscious of the f of the angles and everything too right. that he's doing a shot it still combines it into the story so mm -hmm. it's just like look at this beautiful shot oh what's going on yeah. mm -hmm. he's taking you through the course of the action of the film the right. entire time like it's not just exposition like no. every frame matters to the story yeah that's, and it's, and it's good the way that it kind of bounces back and forth the De Niro's character who was a truck driver who did some favors for the mob and because of that, they they brought him in, and he he has his friendship with Joe Pesci's character, which kind of takes him through his entire life, and then that's what then in then uh, introduces him to Jimmy Hoffa, who's played by Al Pacino, who steals the movie. That's what yeah. I've heard. He yeah. steals the movie. Yes, Pacino um, does. Oh, Pacino does. It's the best Pacino's been. And I love Pacino. He's mm -hmm. so amazing. I was worried at first because not because. It wasn't good. Is because he opens up. You're waiting for the Pacino yell. You're always <laughs> waiting for the yell. Right. Mm -hmm. It happens right away. Am I gonna get him? Am I gonna make it? Go! All right, how's it And he's screaming. You're like, all right, that that, that they peaked. They started with a yell, but it just the whole way through. And him and De Niro share so much screen time. That's great. Together, yes. God, and when they wait. did, because so it's like a Heat reunion. <laughs> no, because because of the relationship, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But they have that one scene in Heat, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is no, they, they they really, and it's not righteous kill, thank God. And they bounce back and Oof. forth off of each other, and. De Niro has to play younger than Pacino, like significantly younger, and it works, mm -hmm. and you understand why. And it's just there's there's just so much depth to the film, and there's so like it's rich in character, and it doesn't get repetitive. Like, oh, this isn't Goodfellas, this isn't Casino. You, you don't even think about that mm -hmm. stuff because it's just a new story that he's telling. 
and it chronicles the Irishman. It chronicles De Niro's life through. And I, I don't think that he. I mean, this a lot of this story obviously is real. I don't know if the character that he's playing is real, unless it's like a mixture of all these different people, mm-hmm. because there's things that happen. You're like, well, they don't know that definitely happened, mm-hmm. but right. they're insinuating that that's what happened. I De Niro have a question. Play, yeah, is it better than Marvel movies? <laughs> right. <laughs> so funny that when he got up there too, and I posted, you know, the the thing of him uh, doing his speech. Like everybody, it, all it, the comments. It's just, but it's like I, I didn't even think about. No, it's like I'm not thinking about that. I'm watching this movie. I want to watch him. No, 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 I know, I know, I know. But but it, 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 it's just funny. Gray Drake is the fucking best. Mm. She wore a Captain America shirt to the yeah. thing or something like that. <laughs> but it was but it was underneath her thing or whatever. She, <laughs> she posted pictures. She's, she's so she's so great. I love her so much. She, uh, she was posting she, some funny pictures. She's, with it. she's yes. so great. It was yeah. Captain America, right? Yeah, yeah. She's so great. Uh, um, but anyway, the movie is the movie. You're, you're going to love. Yeah, the fact that everybody loved it gets me very excited. I mean, there hasn't been a Martin Scorsese movie with, which I don't like. I mean, yeah. even the Christ, Aviator, Hugo. which is like Hugo. I love oh, okay. Hugo's very good. Um, yeah, he doesn't make bad movies. No, he really yeah. doesn't. I. I'm just so excited for this movie, mostly because, like you said, I just want to see Nero stomping people. Like, I mm-hmm. want to see, well, I want to so see this is and I want to see a new Pesci. Because like, yeah, we haven't seen him in so damn long. The ticket price, or the Netflix price, is worth the Joe Pesci Pacino performance. De Niro is great. Mm-hmm. But a stomping De Niro happens, it, yeah. it, even, it's violent. Yeah. But I think it's the least violent out of all of Scorsese's gangster movies. I mean, there's okay. stuff that happens, and Sebastian's awesome. Yeah, Sebastian's awesome. Is have a big part? on your... Big enough. Okay. Yeah. Is it on your top uh, ten of the of the year? Yes. Okay. Of the year, Easy, right. easily. Yeah. Easily. Okay. easily. Uh, of the year, yes. I have to. Uh, there's a lot that I haven't seen. I want to see Parasite. I want to. Mm. There's there's so many movies. I have farewell. I want to see all these right. movies before I make my list at the end of the year. Me, but yes. But me, as of right now, Jojo Rabbit. There's yeah. a lot that I need to see. Let me tell you a movie that jumped into my top ten this week. What do you got? Dolomite. Yes. Is it, is it great? Oh, isn't it great? Isn't it awesome? So good. You watched oh, it last night. I gotta see oh. it. Okay. It's so, it's you guys so are gonna good. love it. Craig Brewer rules. We gotta get Craig Brewer. I. Did he direct that? Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. So uh, it makes me excited for coming to America too because right, so he's I, doing that. All right. Well, I did my review of The Irishman. You do your review of Dolomite. So I and you for, can chime in. And you guys yeah. have been. Yeah. You guys watch Dolomite. It's so a perfect movie. That's it my really review. Is. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's it really is. Movie. So I kept trying to start it. Like I tried to start it Friday night and I was drunk, so I like fell asleep. I tried to start it Saturday morning and then I had to do a bunch of stuff. So finally, yesterday morning, I wake up. Amanda was out of town all weekend, so I turn on Dolomite. And I'm like doing a couple other things at the time, and then I just like sat down and started watching because I was having way too much fun. Like the first ten minutes, the movie kind of grabs you, right? Yep. And Eddie Murphy, this is Eddie Murphy's best acting performance mm-hmm. since since Dreamgirls, I guess, because he was nominated for an yeah, Oscar. Yeah. But really and truly, like you are seeing, he's Rudy. It's he's yes, he's Dolomite. Yeah. He yeah. he he's is really, Rudy Van really Moore. And you you kind of forget that you're watching Eddie Murphy because you know like there was a point in Eddie Murphy career when he was just doing like I'm big I'm like after yeah. like Nutty Professor was amazing but then he went clumps and then he started doing all this weird stuff mm-hmm. right. Dr. Duel. Him and mm. Dolomite, and the, the supporting cast in Dolomite deserves all the recognition, especially the, the female. I was what just going to look name? up her name because she, she was, was so incredible. Uh, you had Craig Robinson, you had Mike Epps, right. um, you know, you had Wesley a ton Snipes, of. Right? Wesley, well, Wesley Snipes yeah, played a small uh, role, but oh, it was awesome. He Wesley Snipes huge. was great. He was uh, great. Keegan Michael Keel, Keegan Craig Michael Robinson. Keegan. Uh, yes. So the girl is uh, Davine Joy Randolph. She was incredible. Davine was, Joy Randolph. The whole cast, yeah. I gotta watch. The, the, just the story alone. And listen, it's not a laugh out loud comedy. No. But, but it's a laugh out the that's way that's what the I love. Yes. yes. Yeah. The way, when they're shooting there is Dolomite, a... dude, I was dying. Mm-hmm. Just because because Wesley Snipes plays this like diva director yeah. who's an actual an like, actor, based on yeah. person that was an actor at the time. He kind of was in black exploitation films. And he is lights out in this yeah. role. Snipes? I see Snipes is lights out, yeah. man. He's so good. Yeah. And yeah. Every cameo that you see, because there's you know like there's a Snoop Dogg cameo, whatever, and some of those cameos can tend to be like okay, they were great, okay. they were great. I'm looking for yeah. Craig yes. Brewer is a very underrated, not only because he's a friend of the show, but he's he's a he is an underrated director. He's I, the Footloose remake is good, it's good, it's good. Um, but it, but Hustle and Flow obviously is yeah. is the one. But did you like you like this movie? Dolomite, I I loved it. I got yeah. to see it at Fantastic Fest on the oh. big screen, and oh. so uh, it was actually the what, the first secret screening because they show two secret screenings and they mm. don't tell you what it is. The second one was the Lighthouse, and I was very sad that I missed it. Mm. But um, I'm good with that. Yeah. <laughs> but Dolomite, well, black Honestly, and white movies. Huh? I know you love them. Yeah. But uh, the thing about Dolomite is my name is that I found it to be extremely joy a joyful movie. Oh my yeah. god! Like that's yeah. it's kind of with Jojo Rabbit. 
it. I cried, you know, because it's yeah. obviously a, a, a hard yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but Dolma, it's just you're just smiling the mm -hmm. entire time. You know, it's just one of those movies that if you, it's like a feel good movie, uh, but but it's also very smart, right? Yeah. It's also a deep movie, yeah. and it, and and it, I feel like this is Eddie's comeback. Yeah, right? totally. it, it really is. It does give you hope too. It's like it, everybody can get behind the fact he's like, I was supposed to be someone. I wanted to do this, yeah. and, and he kept working, and he was so. Yeah. Do they I, show it, the kick? Do they show the kick that misses? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. You've, you've seen that that shot, right? The in, in the actual movie, like he he kicks. It's like the Return of the Jedi kick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He misses by a mile. Right. And, yeah. and it's so but it's, good. it's it's just the character of of him. You know, like you were saying, like him. Just he's like, I want to do this. I'm trying hard to like. This is my goals. And he he would set the, the whole point of the character is that he's setting himself up to to uh, always succeed, yeah. even yeah. though everything around him and everyone around him is telling him he can't do it. Right. right? Yeah. And so you're always rooting for us. him. It's, it's yeah. Missed us. You did, can't. Do they do they have the scene when? It, well, the, the one they're making it when he shoves the cocaine in the cop's mouth? No. Oh, it's so funny. Yeah. But they have a really good uh, sex scene. The, yeah, and there's like... <laughs> the, it's, okay, so first of all, that's when I got the biggest laugh in the movie. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, the one like beautiful thing about this movie, and I kept like th seeing some sort of storyline that I thought was going to pop up, and it never did, thank goodness. Because really and truly, like Darina said, it is not like there's a couple moments where you're like all right a little down and out but you know it's going to get better mm -hmm. like there's no real negative moments you are having fun the entire movie and like you said it is a it is a feel good movie it's an important mm -hmm. movie it's it's like this this amazing that. movie that we're like everybody is working together mm -hmm. to like to really just do something in their life top black 10 white this year? it doesn't at 100% better, it's my top 5 yeah, better than uh, wow. good boys Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's, in, it's easily in my top ten. Yeah. I, I loved it so much. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, cool. There's two reviews for you, yeah, The Irishman and uh, yeah. and um, Dolomite is my name. So many good movies this year. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah. Before we jump into movie news, because we have a lot of it, too. A lot of movie news, and we have our main topic, obviously, Game of Thrones guys getting themselves into some heat again. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But, Riley, uh, what happened this weekend? Well, uh, my grandmother uh, haunted me all weekend. And uh, <laughs> how do, Sorry, how do, Josh. How do you know that's true? I thought we were going to get How do you know it's that. not true? I, I, I didn't say it was not true, but I'm just saying, how do you so know it's true? Here's here's, well, here's what happened. Start. So Friday can I, night. Can I preface this real quick? Sure, sure. So I was working this party this weekend in Playa Vista, and the entrance to the party, you had to walk through like a haunted house, but I was early because I was the host of it. Yeah. And I was just outside yelling the host name, going mm -hmm. like, Emily, <laughs> you didn't want to I go, don't through. go through this. Like, and it was literally an eight-second maze. But there was like a stupid Pennywise outside of it. No thank. You did, so you didn't walk through it? No, I waited till she opened the front door. <laughs> you kidding me? You kidding me? And it's an eight-second maze. It's literally eight seconds. But you survived horror nights. You could have done That's it. That's probably why. But I don't know if there's somebody right. in there waiting to pop out. <laughs> and in horror nights, you, I was surrounded by friends and a camera. Right. Right. This you one, felt safer. By yourself. Yes. Well, we will yeah. follow you with a camera wherever well, we you want. But we weren't there at that time. All right. So, uh, I want so to anyway, see your ahead. face so, with this. So, uh, so tell me. Uh, it was a big weekend for Julie, my fiance, who her mom and her sister came. They went dress shopping, so they left me alone Friday night watching the USC game. It was by myself in this empty house. And thank you. And I started. <laughs> so the house is very, very, very old, right? So at one point, I hear a noise right above me, which is my grandmother's room where she stayed. Okay. And so I heard something that I thought was the house settling. It was kind of like a, you know, just a noise. And I went, okay, no big deal. Then a big on the ground and Leia is who's sitting next to me just looks up and I go oh, okay uh -uh. so I turn off the game and I'm waiting and I'm listening and it literally I heard somebody walk across the room upstairs I hear footprints you know walking across the room and I go and nobody was up there right nobody was up there I was by myself in the house I go okay that really fuck and Leia's losing her mind she's like looking and she's like <laughs> And she's walking around in circles. Like, okay. I like that your grandmother gets ominous music, by the I way. I know. Well, that's fine. She was saying hi to me. So I do yeah. go upstairs. I bring Leia with me. And she runs up. And we, we look around there. And I'm like, I don't know. The windows are closed. I was thinking maybe it was the wind and everything. The so wind, fine. you idiot. Yeah. So that was that. So that no no paranormal stuff the rest of the weekend. Everything was fine. We oh, had a, the barbecue. We had this. We had that. So we're cleaning up yesterday. And uh, Julie's sister goes out to the back to, to, to do some trash and everything, and the door swings shut on her, and there's a little doorbell there. that. So she rings the doorbell. Julie looks at me and goes, oh, I think she got locked out. I go over there. I open the door. She goes, yeah, the wind closed the door. And I go, yeah, that was weird. Close the door. We go back. She goes into, Julie's sister goes into the kitchen, starts washing something. Julie's with me as we're loading out our stuff. 
and the doorbell rings. The doorbell fucking rang and nobody was there. This is where I have never experienced in my life. The doorbell rang and I went, is she in the back? And I look and I catch eyes with her sister and her sister looks at me and goes, I didn't do that. And I go, and I look at Julie and she goes, what the fuck? And I go, why did that doorbell ring? Why did that doorbell ring? Why did the doorbell ring? And I go to the back and I look and I'm pressing the button. I'm looking at, I'm like, did it get caught? Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, did it get caught? Was it something? I was like, what is going on here? That doorbell rang by itself. Yes. That is did it. Do it. Did that, it do it again? Or just no, once? that was it. Just yes. once. Just once. So I don't know your what that was. And it was haunting your And ass. it was a good 15 minutes after she rang the doorbell to be let in. Boy, so I'm it wasn't stuck. There again. You sure it wasn't stuck? I checked. Okay, and this is number what of all the creepy circumstances you've had at that house after your I grandma mean, died? I mean, I've walked out. Uh, I was walking out to the beach at one point, and I saw a figure walk by me into the other room. That was out of the corner of my eye. And I thought, maybe, maybe I was making that up myself. There was a night that we were going to bed in my grandmother's room, and we heard the door kind of jiggle, and Leia was barking. I went downstairs. I stood at the top. I felt... I felt it. it Your was presence, like yeah. Chills up and down my back. Um, there was the night that uh, there Get was out of my fucking house. There was a night that I was asleep. <laughs> She's stomping. She's yeah. like, I it's not asleep. a big fucking like, deal. Sell the house. And Julie, we did. We sold it. So they just made a uh, an offer. So uh, Julie woke up one or Julie was awake one night where she literally heard what sounded like hundreds of pots and pans falling in the kitchen. And she woke, she literally woke me up and I wake up to, to Leia losing her mind. She's like, somebody's in the kitchen. Yeah. And I went, what? And I can walk we, down and look around and yeah. Can we all go? Can you go? Yeah. I want to go. We Let's got, go, I, I got one more. T- I, I want to I go one bit? more time before this. Come on. Oh, no. no. We just, no. we play Ouija there and we try to no. communicate. Oh shit, fuck no, Ouija. I'm not doing the Ouija. No. Ouija. No. Nobody, no, no, for charity. He would get him to For charity? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> nice try, dumbass. I'd rather give five hundred dollars to the charity they're choosing than play Ouija with your My queen grandma of death. was the sweetest woman in the world. Uh, she was just saying hi. That doorbell. Was she a prankster? Was she a prankster? She, she was I mean, not. if I was a ghost, mm. I'd haunt all your asses all the time. Oh yeah, just to, I'd be bored. You're I think she just a ghost she for eternity. Was, she was not. Uh, <laughs> she was she was not, not. I would just whisper in Christian's ears like, "No me shush. No, no me shush. No, but no, you've been to the house. Yes, it's lovely. It is. <laughs> It's lovely. When she was alive, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now that she's dead, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, yeah. that place. I'm good. No effing oh. way. Yeah. Right, so what do you guys think? You think Riley is uh, is making shit up, or you think that it's, it's legit? Well, he's shit not up. making shit up. That's his experience of the story. Anything. We don't know well, what it is, but yeah. maybe it was me, a kid being a question. prankster. So no you one asked this question. No one asked this question. I have to ask it because this is this is what happened off air. Makuga doesn't look too good right now. And I said to him, I said, I said are you, because uh, I know him. And I said, are you, you hurting? You, did you stay out last night? He's like, no, I was drinking all weekend, mm-hmm. which is accurate, right? And mm-hmm. as was he, yeah. Yeah, man. As was he. Mm-hmm. So how hammered were you when that bell rang? Oh, completely stone sober. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? It all was right. during the day. All right. We were leaving yesterday. It happened right. yesterday at noon. Why do you okay. think he's freaked out? It was. I've well, never. Because I thought maybe he was everything hammered. else. I was having some wine, watching the game, uh, and the and the walking, and could be the house settling. I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. I'll give it wind. I'll give it all the things like that. The doorbell. I cannot fucking explain. Yeah. I tried to explain it by going. It got stuck. It got stuck. Nope. Yeah. That thing wasn't. Which stuck. Which is possible. Thank you. Come on in, mom. <laughs> You should change your ringtone to get that. Get out of <laughs> my house. I've been try- I've been walking around upstairs, banging on the floor to tell you, get the fuck out of my house. So what does it tell you? Okay, you didn't, you, you didn't listen to me. I stomped on the floor, and I'll you know, ring the bell. Get the fuck out of the house. I would usually go with you on a, a riff here, but uh, <laughs> you don't want to do I, it. I, I don't feel good. Understood. Understood. All right. Uh, anything else that we should talk about before we get into some news? Uh, I went to Not Scary Farm last night, and it was amazing. Was better than uh, oh, Not Scary Farm, huh? Yeah. Well, they're different. different. They're different, right? Horror Nights is a franchise base. They... He would be scared out of his mind, though. Well, because th- maybe because there's Mostly less because of liability far- on a issues. Farm. Yeah. Well, there's that. Children of Corn. Boysenberry, though. Lots of Boysenberry. But um, but the thing mm. they do is that all of the mazes are much more disorienting because they put fog in there. The lights are darker. No. It's you would die. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I'm good. But that... I highly recommend. Uh, also, you can ride the rides like at night too, and they're all dark. So, mm. go- have you guys ever been on Ghost Rider? No. It's a terrifying, uh, really fast wooden roller coaster. Oh, jeez. Like, no I, I thought I was going to die. It was great. Oh. Well, I love roller coasters. I'm not You're scared sick of that. You're fucking, you know that? But... Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's why we're friends. I love, I love that. It's like, so Darina, that's like, just like, that's the sweetest thing you ever yeah. said to me. She's like, she's like you too. Aww, it's like, like I might as well say I love you. She, was like, she goes, you too. Yeah, should I start laughing like the Joker? <laughs> oh, man. Have you seen it yet? No, good girl. So we're going to go see on Thursday on Halloween. Uh, I'm gonna, I might, oh. I might be dressing up that day. You want to? You, you, well, are you gonna be scared? Are you, are you gonna be scared if I'm, if I'm a clown? Are you scared of clowns? Yeah, don't be. A clown. So you are here That's on Friday now, by the way. What's that? You are here on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna be here Thursday. I'm gonna come for like the first ten minutes of okay. your last show, fifteen okay. minutes, and then I gotta get to El Segundo because I'm shooting WGN that day. Oh mm-hmm. shit! I yeah, left yeah. my wallet there. <laughs> <In El Segundo. laughs> Nice. Good one. Nicely good. done. Good one. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Right, I didn't get. That's a good song. I don't listen. I don't listen to the hip hops. You don't. Mm, not really, no. A, yeah, there's some good hip-hops out there. Mark Riley's a racist. I recommend. Yeah, ding dong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's an oh right. God. Yeah, anyway. That's why his grandmother's stumping. Yeah. Yeah. Her, Cody, her you house. know Tribe Called Quest, right? Uh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cody, did you, you do anything fun this weekend? Or you just hung I out with the baby? I watched uh, Watchmen. Oh, oh how was that? Oh, oh, did you, have you seen it yet? The answer is usually no. Yeah, I know. It's usually. good. But every but once in a while, you surprise. It's a fair surprise us. I need to rewatch like... last night's episode to catch some other stuff because I feel like I wasn't paying close enough attention. Yeah. But last night's episode was fantastic. Right, so, was what great. do I? So, if everybody in the room here has seen all of these, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I have three things that I need to watch that I'm going to watch sometime this week. Okay. Mm. Do I finish El Camino? Do I watch Dolomite? Yeah. Or do I watch the first episode of Watchmen? I think you go Dolomite, finish El Camino, start Watchmen. Right. Yeah. Because um, you'll have totally time agree. to catch up on Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah Watchmen will be more but Put time Dolomite consuming. at the top of your list, man. For sure. Dolomite at the top of your list? Yeah. Yes. I, I would agree with that. Right, fine. Cody, you like Watchmen? Love it. Great. You like it a lot? Cool. I'm going down the rabbit hole looking at theories and shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's great. Do, cool. But you like, you like the, like you, I'm assuming you're a fan of the comic as oh, well. Yeah. And uh, like me, because I love that stuff, obviously, because, you know, polit- like anarchist stuff. But mm. um, the, uh, did you, what did you think of the movie? Did you actually like it? The movie was... They tried. They tried. But yeah. did you see the best the, they could. Did you see the director's cut? Uh, yeah, the three-hour one. With the I think Black that one's Vader pretty good. I like the director's well, cut. Well, it's a, a direct. You said it's, it's, it has nothing to do with the movie. It's a direct no, sequel. No. Sequel to the comic. But, well, because so the, I have the graphic. I've I've read the graphic novel many times, but I have it ready. I'm, I think I'm going to read it again mm. and then watch the series. Yeah. Mm. Do it. I've do never that. read it. It's great. It's I'm really, really I've great. Heard it. yeah. Yeah. Last time I read it, though, was I was living at uh, on Blackburn. Whoa, the, whoa. Old, uh, the old uh, Christmas Yeah, yeah, spot. yeah. God, uh, that was the last time I read it. I remember reading Blackburn. in that Blackburn because I was yeah. right down the street from you. All righty. So All righty, then. Let's hit, let's hit some news. Yeah, let's hit and this then, one. We yeah. have some uh, early tracking for Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And uh, it says right now to Box Office Pro is saying it can open anywhere between 185 and $225 million, which would be the lowest in the sequel uh, right. era. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money yeah. and could and I, I would go probably even higher. I didn't know. Some people are ho- hovering around that 185 going, that, look, yeah, 185. This says... To 225. I think that'll like 205 to 10. I just think that's probably accurate. And you know, and if if people are going to use that to say, ah, oh, it's the lowest, there's no there's there's no argument that there's a lot of people have lost interest in Star Wars. That's yeah. a, I mean, that's 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 a given. We know I still that. think not, the not, people that hated Last Jedi are going to go see it. I still think. Yeah, I, 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 I think that there will be a lot. Yes. But I don't think all of them. No, but, but I think a lot. A lot. Because they want to see if either it's finally they can get of back course. on board with it, or th- no, see it's it's completely fucked. Right. But what it it's it for to sit for anybody to say that this means it's going to be a bomb is is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a bomb, but there is merit to the fact that it's not. It doesn't hold the same weight that it used to yeah, when absolutely. Force Awakens came out and all. It's just the franchise in is, is it's in a different state. It doesn't have that gleam of the Yankees that they did when the Yankees today are still trying they won a championship in 2009. Mm-hmm. The the gleam is it is, you're trying to get the shine back on. Is this the one that's going to win them the World Series? I don't know. But but maybe maybe it's maybe, I still think and I've said it a billion times. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. But I think that the Mandalorian and the TV shows are the way that Star Wars is going to win back mm-hmm. the majority of the fan base. Yeah. I agree. Here uh so I was watching I watch Dan Patrick every morning while I'm getting ready and they're they have like, you know, four guys and they're all talking about Star Wars because the Rise of Skywalker premiered during Monday Night Football. Right. It's a sports talk show. Mm-hmm. So, and they they were all saying like, "Yeah, man, I and I they're casual Star Wars fans." Just mm-hmm. like a lot of my other friends mm-hmm. were and they're like, "You know what? I I've really actually enjoyed this latest trilogy." What what you're getting at here is like the casual Star Wars fan that doesn't have as much invested as people like us. That, like yeah. have lives on like us, basically. Right. 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 Um, or have enjoyed these movies, right? Yeah. It's the fact that your diehard Star Wars fans that buy repeat tickets after tickets after tickets, mm-hmm. a lot of those people were soured by The Last Jedi. Yeah. So maybe they go see either Rise of Skywalker out of spite or you don't get those repeat tickets, which a lot of 
the you know those hundreds of unless it's really good. Of unless it's really good, right. yeah. then you then the word of mouth. But I guarantee you, it's like when I stopped watching The Walking Dead for a little bit, and somebody's like, "Hey, you got to get back into it." So I got back into it, and I you know whatever. Or certain shows, like I stopped watching Justified, and then I got back into Justified. Same as Dexter, even though Dexter didn't really end that well. Is once the word of mouth comes, and you do, and you want to be part of the word of mouth, it sucks you right back. Yeah. yeah. Right. But the, the thing about Star Wars though, and other big franchises like this, is that people are gonna not not necessarily the people that had issues with the the that are boycotting. The movie right. mm-hmm. uh, get a life, right. uh, but um, <laughs> they uh, it, there's going to be a lot of repeat viewers no matter what because totally. I I noticed with this and I was away on vacation but I could still see uh, my feed when I came back that people were just joyfully watching the trailer because we all grew up with these these movies right yeah. so whatever whether and, and each trilogy has been different right there's a trilogy for everyone mm-hmm. mine's the original you guys keep your new ones that's great some of them are are, are fun but uh, it's still this kind of it's become like a religion almost yeah. like it's mm-hmm. you know it's it's like people want to see this with their families right yeah. like they, yeah. they i make it a point that because i grew up with these movies with my family we are going to see this movie it, together point. at christmas but it's, and it's and it's a big event because it's the end of the saga yes that's a great point because if you look and we talked about this with the prequels right the prequels have gotten a lot more love these days because the people who grew up with them now mm-hmm. it's their star wars movies right yeah. exactly. our star wars movies were the original trilogy right. now the younger generation like my daughter right the prequels and the old, the original trilogy and the new trilogy are her movies, right? Mm-hmm. This is this is the the most adorable conversation I had with my daughter yesterday. I was walking with her to uh, to this fair they call the Halloween Hoot. She's like you, by the way. Mm-hmm. She bailed off the, the the haunted house line two years in a row. That's my girl. Um, she wanted <laughs> nothing dog. to do with it because her friend her friend were online and her friend's sitting there and she goes. Uh, or in the line, whatever the fuck you want to say, mm-hmm. and uh, and and her friend goes, oh yeah, that at the end something happens, and I thought she goes, what happens? <laughs> she goes, tell me, and she and she's like, no, no, I don't want to tell you. She's like, tell me, right? And she was like, well, their heads pop off. Right. She's like, Ow. she's like, I'm leaving. I want to leave. I go, Vivian, their, their heads don't really pop off. She's like, right. I don't want my head to pop off. Mm. So we look. But anyway, on the I'm way on the way to the hoot, on way the way go, as we're walking to this thing. She's like, she was talking about her being a teenager. She's like, I'll always love you guys. I go, yeah, but you'll be annoyed with us when you when you get old. That's part of being a teenager. When you get to a certain age, you're gonna you're gonna be and you're gonna come and you say, oh, I want to hang out with my friends. Dad, I don't want to watch Star Wars anymore. She's like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's like, I'm not gonna say that. And I go, <laughs> I go, you will. And she's like. No way. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, get good. get that in good. a recording. It was pretty yeah. adorable. That's I know, funny. but but uh, but it, the point is that she she's connected to all these movies. She's watching Last Jedi now. Just, my wife is a very casual Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. Doesn't like the original trilogies. Doesn't like the prequels. Loves. The new stuff. For, loves the new stuff. She wants, can't There's wait for it. Like that, yeah. Because she's a casual, she isn't, she, the thing is why a lot of people, for myself included, yeah. why, when I, I'm watching The Last Jedi with my daughter again, and I've cont- I find more and more problems every time I watch it. But that's because a lot of expectations and things that I have and things that I just don't think fit towards certain characters. Yeah, my wife doesn't watch Star Wars. Like we're, we're nerds. Yeah, we my, get it. We're Star right. Wars nerds. They're but, not. But so. Josh's point of that casual fan yeah. just going to see a Star Wars movie isn't saying, well, that's not the way Luke would act. I say that yeah. because I'm mm-hmm. It rich people who are passionate about right. it, that's what it pissed them off. The casual fan is paying the money. They just want to see fucking lightsabers. Mm-hmm. They want to exactly. see the force. They want to see stormtroopers. And that's why these movies continue to make money. And I think that that's actually more of a higher percentage of, of people than than we think, right? Yes. Because we're in this nerd space. But but even just with my immediate it's a majority. family. majority. Yeah, with my immediate family, like my brother and I can go back and forth and be like, well, this they should have done this. And like, <laughs> like we're yeah. all right. like fucking losers about right. it, right? But my mom, like my nieces, they're all just there to be like, hey, I recognize that. That character. They just want to I go like on a space this adventure. Score. Yes. Yes. No, exactly, my, so. I got on a text exchange with my sister and her uh, fiance and my mom. We're going to go see Star Wars on Christmas yeah. Day, right? Yes, we are. Let's get tickets. Great. And we have a little bit of analytics on this. The Adam tickets, yeah. the it beat the pre-sales of Endgame within the first hour. Well, the first hour, but overall it didn't. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But just they're just doing little tiny like right. It's almost like I know it's a little bit clickbait uh, click to to say this, click but bait. I think there's also they're 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 monitoring. They're going like, let's see. Yeah. I think there is uh, uh, people wanting to know. The movie's gonna make a lot of money. It, it will. It'll probably make less than the Last Jedi. Yeah, I think it'll make you less. Than, yes, it'll make less than the Last Jedi because I, I feel, don't know. It's the last. Le- but it's closing it's really out the good. saga it's though. The saga. I, just, I, 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 saga. Do, I do think it'll make less. Um, is that a word? You're a you know I'm what? A cynic. I'm a cynic. I think it's but gonna, gonna make, make a money. lot worldwide. Like I, like I, wait like I it agree. could be. It, I think it could make more worldwide than the Last Jedi. Oh okay. 
the last, last Jedi. Jedi. Yes, last Jedi. yes, because it's they're closing out the Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's over. This is the last. I don't movie think it's a terrible in... argument. I think it's pro- it's probably possible, but mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I think. I just don't think that it's going to be a disappointment at any stretch of no, the imagination. Of it's going to make it's going to make a lot of money, mm-hmm. and it'll be yet another Star Wars movie that breaks records uh, in December. Which to this day, as brilliant as I, you know, I think Bob Iger is one of the dopiest decisions he ever made was Han Solo in May, right. two weeks after Infinity and he's War. He's even saying it. I know he's he yeah, said he said it. He's like whoops. That that's one that's one thing I just I'm gonna take. That's my bad on that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take that that's one. a whoopsie daisy that's over here. Whoopsie daisy. That's an oops. <laughs> yep. uh, by the way, one of my favorite nicknames I said the other day. Tell my brother that we gave this kid in college was Oops because he used to drop everything. <laughs> he used to break things, trip. And we used to call him Oops. We my it's the best nickname. I used to have this bit in my stand up about how like cruel older people were with nicknames, right? Like my my uncle he was like, yeah, back in the day we had this guy Johnny Struggles. Like, why are you struggles? Hey, he's in a wheelchair. I was like, what? That's, that's, what's wrong shit. with you? That's a that's that's a big one. Yeah. I remember, I remember my dad. My dad told me about a guy that they were in Nam. They were all sleeping. It was his watch, yeah. and he fell asleep. And he woke up and <laughs> shot two. And they called him two shots. <laughs> The rest oh of my his, god! Rest, rest of his career, they call him two shots. I mean, yeah. we'll get the paper. Get yeah, the paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> two shots. Two shots. Oops! And uh, what, what? Uh, struggles. Johnny yeah. struggles. Johnny struggles. I mean, you got hey. it's all you can do. Some, people, some of us just it's therapeutic to laugh I at ourselves. To, I get it. I went yeah. to college with this girl, and she passed out like one of the first parties of college, and somebody drew a big cock on her face. Right? <laughs> yeah, and you they, can't do that anymore. No, and they called her. <laughs> Why and not? then for the rest of college, they. Called Called her cockface, like oh, and she was a very pretty, nice girl. I was like, "Stop calling her that! I, like, you awful. can't do that." It's, it's, people are horrible. This is and there's some beautiful cocks is, out there. There's nothing wrong with well, calling her cockface. Well, yeah, but this is but this is the other this is the other one that I thought was the mean. But it's a mean thing. But you still, yeah. The, there was someone. I won't say whether it's a guy or a girl. There was someone that looked like Dan Aykroyd in Nothing But Trouble. Okay. We talked about last week. Yeah. And anytime this person would walk by in the in the Florida State game, my friend who was douchey would, and the person didn't know, but they, he was go, he's go NBT. <laughs> would call the person NBT, and, and it's like, and I said, I said, why do you call them NBT? He's like, looks like the judge from, uh, and I go, oh my. God, it does. <laughs> but you got like, how do you call that? How do you do that and feel yeah. good about yourself? There was this. There was, there was a girl we went. To, I went to high school with, and she looked just like this kid that we went to high school with, Joel. So everybody's called her Joel. <laughs> I was like, guys, mm-hmm. come on. Yeah. Like, be, we're not. That's so mean. It's, and you're like, not even. Uh, because the man. problem is that when the nicknames, like, you, you don't want to. You're like, that's mean. But then it's like, damn it, it's fitting. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, remember they yeah. call this? They call this poor bastard Steve, from. Uh, from because he looked like the fucking horse and water boy. Oh. And I'm, like, I'm like, that's awful, but he does look like fucking Steve. Oh. Um, Did you guys ever get any mean nicknames from kids bullying you? Uh, I mean, my last name is Makuga, so it was just Cougs all yeah. the time. Cougs? Makugs. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, no, my, really. my name in Spanish it's, it's Dorina, oh. but yeah. uh, uh, Orina is actually yeah. Piss. That's, oh, yeah, you said that. And yeah, so yeah, they, that, yeah. they called me oh, Piss. That's rough. Yeah. Isn't that that's, great? All right, well, that. Piss, we're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, me shush. 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 Well, let's go to break. We'll hit some more movie stories when we get back, and then we'll, uh, we'll also talk about what the hell the Game of Thrones guys are saying now. Uh, all right, we'll be back. Will you? They called me uh, Cody Smalls because I was small and short and skinny. School sucked. Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Wow. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the hey greatest everyone, in the John world Roca, of sports, talk about Roca, the big issues, Roca, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. 
Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Wow. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, and I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursdays on the Collider video channel, and it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices on Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and I, baby, yes, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the Blue Brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Jesus. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well. Make every it big, Saturday and make Sunday. it big. Make, Hello, make, how make are you guys big. doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. And then after episode nine, you got TV shows. So we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on. Be real. Okay. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it. All on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. This is something that I forgot to tell Darina because, uh, and you all laugh at this. I didn't post this yet because I just feel bad doing it. So my daughter yesterday, when we went to this um, this fair, haunted Halloween, the haunted, well, the whole thing. But she, so she got they, my the youngest got a uh, a balloon made, and it was like this. They made a little baby, and then um, <laughs> so my my daughter, the other one, got a sword made, and it's pretty cute, right? Oh, she, she looks like Link. You know, she, she's Peter Pan, but yes, it, it's oh. got a link. It does, it does <laughs> have a link vibe. But, yeah, yeah. but she got the sword, right? Yeah, it's cool. Well, on the way back, uh, the sword uh, the, the sword part broke. Oh. Uh, we're left with the handle, and that was the handle. <laughs> 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 Yikes. Yes. Uh, well, let, me, let me show. Let me, is, show. Is that, let me show. Can you, can you, can you Cody, are you able to zoom in on that, the, that one? Camera. 
That's the handle. <laughs> <laughs> is that your daughter's hand or yours? That was mine. I, I got it. I got it out of my uh, second. Broke. It, so let me let me let me let me go ahead well, and take that. Your daughter's gonna hold the dick someday. Isn't, isn't childhood? <laughs> wow, Darina. Wow. What if she's a lesbian? Yeah. See. Good point. I said that, fucko. Good point. I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> No, you can right. all hope. But yeah, you get, what if she hope. swings both ways? God, you, never hope, know. you never know. You know what? If I have daughters, you know God, what? I hope they're both Darina. lesbians. Plus, we're so moving bad. into a, you know, new generations oh, that people aren't labeling themselves. There's gender fluidity. You never know. That's Applesauce and grenades. Yeah. You know, whatever. You yeah. got it. Yeah. Uh, all right. What else is going on before I can get the fuck away from this topic? Uh, <laughs> You're the one that brought it up. <laughs> I, I brought up a dick handle. I brought up the dick handle, and then you went into And I kept talking about hands and dicks. That's it. I'm just contributing to the story. Isn't youth, isn't childhood too? Glorious until like she's just hold, walking on this handle like look I have a handle yeah. sword until she figures out like what dicks look like later on in yep. life and then that's always a joke. And to, as she's walking around just innocent little child yes. is yes. just oh my handle of the sword yeah. broke and I'm just like I got in my head I'm like I got to show this to my wife. To where she's like this innocent yeah. little child who's just walking around la, la, la. pissed off and sad that the thing broke. Yeah. And I'm going and now I'm like oh. I gotta show my wife this balloon dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good balloon dick, it's a though. Good balloon. Like props yeah. to solid, the balloon maker. Yeah. Solid balloon dick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on away from balloon dick. Or hard. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't. I don't mean to just abruptly stop the uh, the conversation. Now, some people like you know to make sure it flows nicely, but that to me is. Let's move. No uh, me Yeah, no me shush. Who's that? Right. Shot let's uh, let's let's do a little uh, with the, yeah. a little box office report for you here. Joker won the weekend at number one, eighteen point nine million domestically. It has now made five hundred seventy-one <laughs> million uh, just overseas alone, two seventy-seven million domestic. It's now at eight hundred and forty-nine million worldwide. Ooh, this thing, sweet. Joker, Beast. off of seventy wow. million, could hey, hit one billion. Remember when they thought that movie wasn't gonna it was gonna be? Oh, it'll be a side project. Remember Remember when you said that, uh, they thought that this movie was going to be disturbing and then it ended up making a bunch of people dance on some stairs? Yeah, I saw I, that meme. It, yeah. That was a funny meme. Yeah. Yeah. That, it, that was great. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Like, oh, no, I got to worry about this. Everybody's yeah. dancing on yeah. the stairs. Well, I mean, look, it, it, you can understand why people are, are antsy about those sure. types of things, but it's the, it, it, it was... It, the they're dancing on the stairs for effing Instagram likes. They're not dancing on the stairs to happiness. be like Joker or be like, you know what was great <laughs> right. in Joker when he danced on the stairs and then he murdered a bunch of people, okay? No. It's like they're literally <laughs> dancing on stairs for Instagram no, no, likes. That, that but was, also that was they're point. celebrating that, a movie, that though. Was the that point. was They are not celebrating a movie. Some of them are. They are legitimately doing it for social media. Some of them, yes. Some of them, yes. all of them. Yeah. No. But the point Did is, you see that photo shoot? There was like nine tripods and six girls dressed as Joker. Like, <laughs> look at me. I look at likes What if I did that? What if I dressed as Joker? I would and I make would be... fun of you. No, yes. but, but I wouldn't be doing it for Instagram likes. Yes, is my you point. would. Uh, you, if you, you posted would. it, if you posted, if you posted it, you it, you it, it's the likes. If you just take the picture okay. to take the picture's sake, you're not doing it. Right. So I can, what if I, so I would have to do it and not take photos to have, to yes. actually have fun and yes. celebrate this Correct. movie? Correct. Look, you want to be yep. legit, yeah. You yep. can't post. Okay. Nope, no, no post. <laughs> <laughs> that was That's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> All, right. All right, what's uh, what? What the hell are we talking about? The movie. Oh that yeah, so it. look. The, the no, fact, no, the fact that that movie two point nine billion. Made, that's a lot of money, and especially for the fact that it did not cost a lot to make, and uh, it is it's a beast. It is a juggernaut. That's also used to before Irishman. The Joker might be my two or three this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, definitely sort of, my top ten it, for sure. It's in my top five, dude. Look it's at, in my top five so yeah. far. Yeah. Look at this too. Okay, Todd Phillips. Hangover yeah. was the top rated R rated movie before the Joker. He's got the top two now. That's nuts. It's friggin' yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, more R rated movies. Huh? Yeah. It beat Deadpool. Yeah. Did it's it? Top wow. R-rated well, Ryan movie Reynolds all time. Uh, celebrated last week yeah. or congratulated them yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So J- Joker is the R rated and then it, uh, Hangover is top R rated comedy all time. Think about it. Top Phillips has his hands on both of them. Yeah. He directed both of those movies. He's crushing. It's crazy. Uh, right? What's next? You want to hit the Benioff and Weiss stuff? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, Benny off and white. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cody. I know. Co- Co- Cody, get your whiteboard ready. <laughs> yeah, this is Cody. This is not going to go well in the comment section. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, they basically, um, they avoided talking. They're at this, like, kind of Q&A, and uh, I'm going to kind of sum it up. They kind of said. This was in, uh, this was at the same day. Actually, because this was at the film festival in Austin, right? This is where I they're doing it. Yeah, it's the same. They, he, uh, Catherine Reitman won an award with them. Oh, awesome! At this this same thing. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's it. it. Oh, yeah, that's okay. It. All right. Great. Our good um, friend Catherine Reitman. Yeah. Work, yeah so, watch working moms. Wow. It's great. She's great. So yeah, the Austin Film Festival over the weekend. That uh, they were asked a bunch of questions. They started talking. Um, the thing that set a lot of people off was that they kind of acknowledged that it was like. 
film school for them. <laughs> it was kind of like, oh, we didn't really know what we were doing. Um, we, we in the last of, season or in general? In the first season. Oh. In the first, in the pilot. Correct. And this kind of, the reason that they said that was I thought they were being a little bit transparent. They were saying, look, we, we had some problems. We didn't know what it was like to interact with different department mm-hmm. heads. Um, the pilot wasn't very good, we thought. And so this, we hadn't written for TV before, all these different things. It was just basically fuel for the fire because then it just everybody went towards that last season and went, look, that's why it's happened. But that's not accurate, though. Yeah, I would. If for the if 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 they're talking about again, I don't know how much is inside of this read, report, but like read yeah, read the, read a little bit more with the reporters. From what, so, what you're but, saying is that if they're just talking about the first season and the pilot, then it's like yeah, but they had so much good up and even if you hate the last season. Well, I they, wonder how much of input they had as showrunners beginning of the show towards the end of the show. I would assume they would gain more control right. over it, right? So maybe that's why the right. first one. What are people getting mad at? Because that can't be right. They're Here, just mad at. Listen, so. During the panel, the two acknowledged, I'm reading from this Vanity Fair article yeah. that covered it, the two acknowledged they had basically no TV qualifications uh-huh. to speak of the time they landed their HBO deal. The fact alone was now uh, now not new, but the extent to which that affected their early work was striking. Describing their earliest meetings with George R. R. Martin, Benioff said the author questioned their bona fides. We didn't really have any, he said. We don't know why he trusted us with his life work, life's work. The two also admitted to, ma- uh, to making basic writing mistakes in the pilot, saying everything we-, we could make a mistake in, we did. That included script, casting, and costume design. Weiss described the experience as essentially a very expensive film school. The two didn't even know how to work with costume designers, for instance, which made the entire thing a huge learning experience. Mm-hmm. After producing a season filled with 39-minute episodes, this is the first season, the two said HBO asked for additional 100 minutes to fulfill their contractual obligations, so they added, for example, a shared scene with Robert Barath- Baratheon and Cersei Lannister, who previously somehow shared zero scenes in the entire season. Wow. So Baratheon <laughs> and Cersei did not share any scenes mm-hmm. in that first season, so they had to add that. Um, so that that has been causing a lot of people to now realize but, I mean, this. But right. if you look at both of their resumes, right, mm-hmm. if you go to their wiki pages, there's not a lot there. Other than Game of Thrones, like I think I saw Origins, what well, Wolverine Origins in there, and maybe Troy. Like, he I, also like, wrote, I, like uh, Benioff wrote uh, the Twenty Fifth Hour, that okay. Spike Lee movie, which I thought was yeah. a fantastic movie. Okay, so that movie. one's good, but yeah. the, but uh, it's it, but it's not like a large set of uh, like filmography, right? Uh, like, that's cre- yeah. credits, right. and so so it's interesting to think about HBO as a company already has amazing people that they work with, right? So I'm sure they already had a team of like costume designers and all these people that they wanted to hire that they may have used in, in their other shows. Certainly so, on casting. Because they saw a lot of Rome crossover, yeah. Right, mm-hmm. exactly, right. So, so maybe this what talk about a uh, really good sort of entry level job well, for but these also guys. Also, too, is like obviously when they were shooting the Game of Thrones, it was a very niche book series that right. like you didn't know it was going to be nobody what it was, knew, right? right? Like That's true. the people that have read the books versus the people that watch the show is probably like two percent, if that, mm-hmm. right? And so you get these guys that. Again, have no credits, whatever. It lit lightning in a bottle. They had yeah. no credits. Somehow George R. R. Martin said yes. They get lucky. They shoot this show. The pilot right. sucks, but they end up getting a series because somehow HBO sees the thing. And v- very rarely does HBO shoot a pilot that they don't put on this on in a series. Mm-hmm. They're like, we put a lot of money into this. There's no way we're going to let this fail. So then they shoot it. They get all this stuff together. Yes, an expensive thing and whatever. But really and truly, if they're just talking about the first season, but this is the this is why as you were reading this, why it makes sense to me. Here, here's the difference. If the last season would have landed with all the fans mm-hmm. and the same exact comments were made, then go the fans go, oh, yeah, well, you changed it up and you made it work and you went from that. But look at where you got now, guys. Mm-hmm. But because they would take the whole entire body of work. But instead, because a lot of people didn't like the last season and, and certainly not the last episode. That those comments, they're not looking at everything that they went. Because if you look, you got to be fair, though, on the side of things. They did a lot of good yeah a yeah. lot of good My there's goodness. a lot of seasons that they are responsible for yes they yeah. followed a lot of hold on but they, they're they also follow... collaborating with a lot of people that are already amazing well, yeah, that's, but that's but that's, that's, a, that's a given I mean, that's any that's anybody that's anybody who's working in tv and to get credit for things you're working with a great team like scorsese is great he has a team that he's right. working with yeah. so everybody just needs to be acknowledged what i'm saying is you have these these showrunners who are working with george rr R. martin and are following his work and doing a lot of that from Season one, two, three, and a lot of people think two is great. Let's say all these seasons that you loved that got you into it, they're also responsible for it, as well as the team. 
But because they had a season that you didn't, that's what you look at. And you go, well, what did you do for me lately? That's what you did. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. So those comments mean that you did fuck up his work. You right. did mess it up. You didn't learn from your mistakes in the beginning. That's but, the way and, they're And we're never going to know this. But my point about earlier is that I, I'm, I'm curious as to how much input they had as in, like, actually captaining the ship, right? Like, how, how much did they, that they let go of control at the beginning because they were just learned. It was kind of a learning experience for them. And then maybe they did become more hands-on as the show went on, well, right? I, but I so think, well, I think that what they had, though, that they didn't have at the end, which I think hurt them, was that they had, in the first, whatever, three seasons, they had the books. They had all the stories mm -hmm. there for them. When they had to write it on their own, it became, it's daunting. Yeah. yeah. Because... It is not you have his you have George R. R. Martin's input and you have his help, mm -hmm. but you don't have the source and the rich material. It's the same thing like Fantastic Beasts, right? Fantastic Beasts Good point, are yeah. just yeah. scripts. They're not these level right. books. And that's why significantly you can tell the difference between Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even though J.K. Rowling wrote the scripts, they're scripts. They're not these detailed, right. elaborate books. I remember I read the Harry Potter books when I was watching the movies. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And you were so into the world that these little right. things happened mm -hmm. that it was so rich. The scripts, and I am the only person on earth I think that likes the Fantastic Book, uh, the Fantastic Beast movies. I understand why people don't like them, but yeah. for some reason, there's, they're like my I Transformers, like, like uh, Roka. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but I can clearly acknowledge that these are not as right. level, and I think that's what Benioff and Weiss were doing. They they were they were right, and the last one is very fan servicey. The last ser the last season is mm -hmm. not that rich. There are things that happen. You're like that rushed, rushed, mm -hmm. don't make mm -hmm. sense. Uh, logic against the characters. There, there's those again. I liked the se the season, but I get the gripes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's where the characters end up. I didn't really have any issues with. It's just the execution of it. Totally. I just prefer the earlier it. seasons as to how they. And it's again, it's like Star Wars. It's just it's. The, I prefer these other seasons. It's more my jam when they yeah. were all about like political, you know. Uh, more uh, detail. Exactly. Whereas like, and, and later, just it it. I, it's like at least show me dragons if you're not gonna develop a character story arc, which you how got, I prefer. What you got. You got a ton of yeah, dragons. Exactly. So that's what I focused destroyed on. Destroyed Westeros. Yeah, that's what yeah. I focused um, on. Well, I, I think, you know, to your point, is like, it's a shame that HBO or that Benioff and Weiss didn't want to do it anymore, or whatever the case may be was, because you could have done three more seasons of ten episodes. This isn't The Walking Dead, totally. where I'm watching every week going like, I don't know what this show is anymore, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's going. If they're good episodes, like it has its ebb and flows. The last like twelve episodes have been very good, but the three seasons before that, it was very slow and all over the place. Um, the same thing could be said about Game of Thrones is you were rushed. Instead of get, like having taken your time or something, yeah. you were rushed into the sense of like, all right, well, who's going to be on the throne? Oh, we only have right. seven episodes. We've right. got to kill a bunch of people. We self to totally. the night dead. Like the I whole, think they were exhausted. Uh, I agreed. I think they agreed. were exhausted and they just wanted to get it over with, uh -huh. and it showed. Uh -huh. um, and I also say that with – I like the last season, but mm -hmm. I can't argue with anyone that says – it was rushed. Yeah. What you just said, I think you nailed it. That it just, it, they wanted, they had seven episodes and they had to cram it all in. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear in the last yep. two episodes. Yeah. It, was like, it reminded me of Rome. Like, yeah. like because Rome was a, an amazing, amazing, so different circumstances. But yeah. Rome was an amazing series. And I think it was season two, right? Season, they, it was too expensive. Mm -hmm. Nobody was watching it. Right. So they had to say, okay, in, instead of going the five or six seasons, let's cram everything that we wanted to do into season two. Now mm -hmm. that's different. That's because of budget and they had to cancel yeah. it. But this, Felt similar to which like, uh, yeah. you're 100 percent right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, one of the good things that did come out of it um, in they when they were doing the research, uh, you know, building the pilot and everything, they went on the internet and looked at fan forums, and that's how they found Jason Momoa because fans no, were right. saying that should be the, like Drago. fan casting. Oh, so Drago. they went and reached out to him, and that's how we got Drago. Yeah. That's cool. My man. That's pretty cool. My yeah. man. My man. Um, but then yeah, there's some some other things in this. There's this long. Tw uh, Twitter thread from Needle and Pen where Dan wanted one of them is Needle and Pen by the way and it's the at is for Arya for Arya <laughs> so yeah. he can yeah right yeah. Uh, Dan so the wanted, Harry Potter fans right. yeah. uh, Dan wanted to remove as many fantasy elements as possible because we didn't just want to appeal to that type of fan they wanted to expand the fan base to people beyond the fantasy fan base to mothers and NFL players which is such a random huh? thing to, I know I guess to fantasy elements can pull people out maybe they wanted to make more Rome yeah Instead and it felt of, like that. Yeah. And that was the, it was Until a, you got the dragons, it was a very, very much a Romish show. It was yeah. like, it was it was it was, really it was Rome meets Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And that's and that's what they were able to do, I think, brilliantly for a while. Mm -hmm. I mean Because to, really to and truly people. there aren't a ton of fantastical elements. If you take away the dragons, 
White, White Walkers. White Walkers. White Walkers, yeah, yo. White Walkers. That's, yeah, like, that's, cool. that's the coolest part Magic. of the show. Magic, yeah, man. Coming John Snow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a witch They'll in there, yeah. Alexandra. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun, dude. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> The Giants. The Giants. Because what I love about it is like the political intrigue. I'm like, oh, man, I'm like, oh, shit. The wall. Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty Fuck. fantastic. Yeah, 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 my bad. My bad. Anyway, but I'm curious what you fire, uh, <laughs> As I'm sure that you guys have already been doing, whether or not you're watching it on the clip out or you're watching it live. Cody, uh, are you okay back there? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Everyone's just kind of confused as to why this was a story. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Is it, yeah. I think that that's, yeah, it's, it's the comments... If you look, they're talking about season one. Now you can mm-hmm. you can relate it back and say, well, you didn't learn your lesson, obviously, yeah. or you went back to where you were. If you wanted to take that route, but I I agree with the with with the yeah. comments. I, I don't see it's the, like how the big Scorsese of a story. It's like the Scorsese thing. It's like in, in the Marvel thing. It's just like okay, yeah, they said this and yeah. that's fine. We move mm-hmm. on because the the show's over. Well, speaking of Scorsese, what's going on with him now? Yeah, let's go to that. So he's <laughs> there. You go. Yeah, <laughs> this is the story that will never die. No. Nice <laughs> just segue there. Never die, uh, Scorsese. <laughs> God, please, Scorsese no, can't no. stop talking about Marvel movies. <laughs> now says they're a new art form. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, yeah. What were the comments? Uh, so Scorsese <laughs> seemed keen this past week to clarify his earlier theme park. This is from Collider.com article. He told uh, he previously told Empire about the you know how it's not cinema and more theme park. So speaking with Entertainment Tonight, the re- director returned to the theme park comment saying, "Well, look, the point is in terms of this film, Netflix theaters. What I'm talking about really are films that are made. Let's say a family wants to go to an amusement park. That's a good thing, you know. And at themes, it." it and at themes and parks, there's these cinematic expressions. They're a new art form. It's something different from the films that are shown, shown normally in theaters. That's all. For them, my concern is losing the screens to massive theme park films, which I say again, they're their own new art form. Cinema now is changing. We have so many venues. There are so many ways to make films so enjoyable. Fine. Go in, in if it's an event film, and it's great to go to an event fi- like it's a, great to go to an event like an amusement park, but don't crowd out Greta Gerwig and don't crowd out Paul mm-hmm. Thomas Anderson and Noah Baumbach and those people just don't in terms of theaters. This like, is totally. This is, this is this makes all the sense in the world, and right. this is essentially what he was trying to say. Yes. the first right. time he said right. it, yeah. and what we said when he, when he was like, "Look, they just he just didn't say it the right way. This is saying it the right way. This yeah. is what exactly. I think that this is exactly what a lot of people got what he was trying to say. Now. Coppola, on the other hand, is probably now nah, fuck him. <laughs> on the other side, when you go back to Coppola, yeah, because he 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 definitely took the hard stance. I'm on taking him. my beret and I'm going home. He called them despicable, and I thought despicable. that was funny. It was, well, yeah, yeah, but but this is not this is never what says he was never taking that direct shot at it the way no. that. But anyway, this is uh, it is the it story that sense. won't go Everything away. Everything he's saying yeah. is right. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> Oh, somebody thinking that it was ding dong ditching, uh, that I got caught ding dong ditching at my grandmother's house and it wasn't a ghost. You're wrong. That door was closed. Nobody could get well, in the I back patio. Well, I said that earlier that maybe it was like some kid. Like kid. Like yeah. it Nobody could get you, but it is a back. Was it barbed wire back there? No, there is a big fence that you oh. can't get through unless you climb over it. But you would see the kid climbing. I would out. see the kid. Yeah. Yep. So there was a ghost. So uh, Twitter but user. also, too, you're not in like a very busy neighborhood. Yeah. It's like. You, for yeah. a kid to go, de- I've never even seen all right, kids. All right, over here's there. what we do. So we're gonna take a night camp. Yes. Uh, me, you. No. Yeah. Let's yes. all go. Let's all stay overnight. the night. No, yes. 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 Let's do this. We're <laughs> doing do this. It. We can put it. And we can have a bonfire on the on the beach. Yeah. You know? yes. Yes. Come on. You want to? Come on. We'll get you good bucks. food and drinks. Give me hundred bucks. No. Do it. Steak dinner. Do I'll it. do it for a steak dinner. Yay! Wow. You're going to buy him a steak dinner? I bought the last steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. not taking this guy to Morton's That's again. That's funny. Anyways. Um, okay. Yeah, back to Scorsese. Did you have anything more to say? I mean, no, I think no. I think, that, I think that that's... Look, it's... He Martin Scorsese is, 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 is a... He's... He just he's a you hear this the way he talks he's a gentle he's a gentle yes. dude yeah. and he's just like I'm 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 done with this you know right. so so he, here it is this is what this is what I meant and he and he gives his Bobby. thoughts yeah. and you go Bobby. all right. Yeah. 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 and people right. read headlines and they read them in like the voice that's angry all the time. It doesn't mean that that's what they said because they are most of them <laughs> clickbait, clickbait headlines. No, wait a no I know, but, it, but it also the way they write yeah, headlines now it, it, and it's, all, it's always happened. Point. Exactly. I wanted... And so, so, but but my point is that I, a lot of these people that get asked these questions, like they're when you say you don't like something, it doesn't mean that you're like, oh, I hate this and it's the worst thing in the world and the people that it's made it should him. die. It's yeah. not that. It's just they, they have other issues with the movie right. that are in quality more so it's just like how it affects them personally and their craft it's yeah. sort of like how I feel about Rome right <laughs> do I like Alejandro Iñárritu Roma 
Roma. 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 <laughs> right, but Inuritu won. Like he's always the cinematographer. Birdman. Right? He did Birdman no, and, Bird and, and Babel and, and Gravity, right? No, no that was Alfonso Cuarón oh, as well. Nailing it. Racist. Uh, space. <laughs> space super <movie>. racist. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, great point, Josh. Yeah. But like, yeah, thank I, you. I don't. <laughs> I don't want you Alfonso. Just lost your show. I don't hate Alfonso Cuarón. Yeah, here we go. Well, you, okay. <laughs> so, anyways, we're gonna go. Movie. We're gonna go yeah. film you with a ghost. Yes. And uh, yeah. I, I could say you didn't like Roma. The, he made a black and white movie and a space movie. No yes. wonder you don't like his movies. Yeah, yeah. Correct. But you like Harry Potter, though. Uh, he did I Prisoner do. of Azkaban. Yeah, it's the best one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there it is. So yeah. you don't hate him. You I, can and I didn't know that he directed Prisoner of Azkaban because I don't know who directs anything. anything. It's true. You Besides, always think it's Joe Dante. Yes. Yes. Joe Dante. No, yeah. Besides Joe Bad Dante. Boys 2. Yeah. <laughs> I know Bad Boys 2 is Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah. I know that Goodfellas is Martin Scorsese. I know Braveheart is Mel Gibson. Like I know my yeah. favorite movies, but if they're like, hey, who directed uh, that? Like, I don't know that. Name me another Joe Dante movie besides Gremlins 2. What's it called? Child's Play. No, that's not Charles nope. Play. That's uh, Tom nice. Holland, right? Yes. Ch Charles Play is Tom Holland. Yeah. Uh, seen I'm uh, blanking. Tom Holland. Yeah, different Tom Holland. Not the actor. Like, Tom Holland, the director, did Charles Play. Um, I'm blanking, but I know it. The Burbs. Correct. Thank you. I was going to say it was a showdown <laughs> once for me. That was a big, well, that's yeah. a big moment. But there's yeah. another yeah. one a, I was, was thinking of, though. That was a big Merle Roca moment. Yeah. yeah. There's another one I'm thinking of. I didn't know it. Uh, you didn't know it. Uh, the The Howling. Oh, look at you. Maybe. The Howling. I thought he directed The Howling. <laughs> now you know, now you know. No, that's not me now. You know, that's a different character. <laughs> How you doing the there? Howling. You know? The howling. The burp, did you watch, the howling. Did you watch in that howling. movie, The yeah. Howling? I, you know, my favorite part of The Howling is the, all the dogs inside howling. They come out howling, but it's not yeah. about the dogs howling. It's about the wolf. And the wolf goes, woo. <laughs> and the other dogs are in there go, oh, woo, woo. Yeah, because they don't know it's the big wolf. And the big wolf goes down and gets the magazine. And then they chase the milk truck. And then, and then when they got the truck and they were all howling. <laughs> <laughs> and there was milk. <laughs> the original movie called Dogs with Milk. <laughs> Dogs. Oh, it's right. He seen also Halloween? did Looney Tunes yeah, back in action, time. by the way. The, Can't yeah. use his back in action? <laughs> Looney Tunes back in action. That's in his oh, filmography. Yeah, classic. Very important. I would like. Of course he would direct that because <laughs> Gremlins 2 is essentially a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah. That's true. Uh, all right, listen. Let's go to one more break, and then okay. when we get back, we will do phone calls from you motherfuckers. So basically what we do is uh, the, the number will go up there. You guys will call, and whatever you want to talk about, we'll do it. Bye. You ever seen Small Soldiers? That's a good movie. Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You're gonna get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Sign. Well, you know, if you've been watching us me, every Come week, on. you know blow we me, break down me, the latest me, and the Come greatest on. in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Okay. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, 
And I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursday. It's on the Collider video channel. And it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars, including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops in on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and hey in everyone, your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. And then after episode nine, you got TV shows. So we're going to be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it. Come on, be real. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it. All on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Welcome back, everybody, to Collider Live. Um, how are you guys? Good. I'm Good. Tired. Thank you. How are you? We're Good. I had something I was. Oh, yeah. You wanted me to watch a video? Yeah. We got to watch this Roxanne remix here. Okay. Let's see the Roxanne remix. I think remix. everybody will enjoy it. Okay. Let's watch the remix and then we'll get into some that guy blow up the backyard again. <laughs> so good. If we have it. Yeah. I love that. All right. This is, so this is a remix. A Roxanne remix. We'll see if we are able to do it. No, this this, is this is gonna, are we going to be able to play this? We talk over it. Just keep talking. No, okay, hello, hello, so hello, yeah, hello, you get, you're going to get yeah. to a point Uncle where Leo, it's going to be okay. Okay. something yeah, else. What's going on? Uh, yeah. Have so you guys seen the thing? police? I've seen the police. 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 i <laughs> can we bring up the? Can we bring up his Walter's? Put Walter the French Bulldog. I think he's got his own right channel. Yeah, Walter's is that his channel? Oh, that's his own channel. Okay, let's 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 let's, let's see the most. He's got sixty-seven thousand subscribers. Let's see what's the what's the most popular. It's got to be the one that we watched, right? Which is the one? Yeah, build me a park. Uh, let's do the let's do the uh, Walter meltdown one. Yeah, let's try this. <laughs> What is wrong? You're not even getting in the bath. What is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about it. 
about it and think about how good your life is. What's wrong? <laughs> How does Walter only have 67,000? I don't strength? know. He needs more. Look at that stupid little face. He's adorable. Yeah. For a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so cute. I love it when he's scolded. <laughs> Walter. Good. Anyway. Um, <coughs> bless you. Thank God bless you. All right. Let's get into it some phone calls. kind of sounds calls. like Makuga when oh! Salud. You. Thank you. All right. Let's get into some phone calls. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, you're on Clyde Live. No, what no, do we no, got? No, we got. Oh, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I play. He did that to us on Friday, too. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, just to clarify something. Cause I, I, uh -oh. it's, no, it's said on, I said on Rise of Skywalker thing that I looked like, that looks like a frozen Bespin. I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I get it. It's a, maybe a frozen Cloud City, not Bespin. Bespin's gas. I get it. Holy shit. Oh, come it's on. Like, it's like, uh, really? Uh, if, if, if you know, mm. uh, uh, you're uh, not Bespin a, is, a, is a gas plant. That's all. I get it. No, I get you're it. not a real. Star Wars fan. Cloud City, no. that it could be. It you gotta isn't. give me, revoke your Star Wars card. Holy shit, don't you? No. It's like, it, it just, it's like the person was sleeping, and they heard, <laughs> <laughs> someone said that Bespin was frozen? Somebody oh. said something wrong about Star Wars. Oh. To the internet. Oh. Quickly late to my and, archives. And apparently you're, uh, it was a nerd golem, is what, you're, oh. what you sound like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, oh. hey, you're on uh, Frozen Bespin Live. Who's this? <laughs> Hey, this is uh, David from Omaha. I was texting one of the people that sent you uh, that video through Twitter. Which nice. video? This one? The, the one we the just Roxanne? played? Yeah, they have the Roxanne. Oh, awesome. Thank you, awesome. thank right. you well, for thank that. Thank you for sending it. Yeah, you guys, you guys yeah, sent yeah, some... Man. You guys sent some great videos. Oh, that's yeah. kind of a lot of the reasons we're coming. able to, to you can keep doing that. Yeah, I like to figure out what all this goofy shit is. So uh, <laughs> what do you got for us today? Yeah, I just want to say... Um, I'm kind of, kind of bummed that you and Josh are leaving, man. Uh, you guys are always cracking me up every uh, every day on Clutter Live, man. So, yeah, but I'm looking forward to the future of the show and you guys' futures as well. And so, thanks, man. Like, like, thanks, thanks, guys, for all of you done. And mm. It's very nice That's of you. Nice. Well, thank yeah. you very thank much. You, yeah, and it's not again. It's not the. It's not the end of the road for for either one of us. Uh, yeah. Joe, Makuga said he'll be on the show. You know, probably about, about thir 13, 14 times through until like March, I maybe think so. give yeah. or so. Yeah. Um, and then you also, a lot. Be, yeah, it's a lot. It's fourteen shows over the course of what, two, three months. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for me, you know, you'll be able to uh, find my stuff. I'll be doing. I'll be doing stuff on my channel, so you can uh, check me out. And then these guys are going to be rocking it on this show. So thank you. Yeah, it's just not. It's the band will be uh split up for a little bit so uh it's the, just just part of the, how it goes the beatles made good solo records that's right when they broke yeah. up that's know? true well, uh, down, you know, well, yeah, and she, that's right and everybody i mean during it also people don't realize that too is everybody all these guys are involved with the schmodown uh Makuga's is one of our uh, legendary competitors as is riley obviously um they're they're gonna I don't be exactly call me legendary i think I you're, 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 you're you absolutely you're are. like a turtle Gotti. Well, yeah, I mean, legendary is like a winner. I think a more I don't think like, that's true. No. Nah. I think Not legendary. At all. I think yeah. le if you go back to your to some of the legendary pulls that you've made, the wins mm -hmm. that you've had, the 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 defeat of of JT, of Finstock, Clark mm -hmm. Wolf, mm -hmm. you've had some legendary wins. Uh, no championships, but hey, yeah, yeah. you don't need them. I don't, you don't play for championships. I don't. I don't. You play. I for, play for the hearts and the minds of the fans. It. Yeah. Um, Boom. But anyway, so <laughs> Darina Darina is also um, involved in the Schmodown. Also, she she does a lot. She helps with sponsorships and. Yeah. And um, it gets some people in. You were backstage audience, in so. Chicago. I remember that. She yeah. was. Yeah. And, and, and I will be backstage at Spectacular. At Spectacular. Yes. Uh, all right. Hey, you're on uh, Cloud Alive. Who do we got? Hello. Hello. Hi. You're Hello. on Cloud Alive. Who do we got? This is Kayla. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Hi Kayla. Kayla. What do you got for us today? Um, I'm here from Pennsylvania, and I would just like to know, to tell you guys that um, my grandmother actually knew Russell Bustliano when she was growing up. Oh, from uh, from uh, the Irishman? Um, and um, I would like to say to Christian and to Makuga, um, thank you guys so much for actually being part of the show. I'm so excited for you guys, what you guys are going to do in the future. Awesome. And thank I you. can't wait. For you guys to venture off and doing your own things, and you guys to be sadly missed. My question is: Wait, where um, in Pennsylvania what, are you from? Where in Pennsylvania are you from? My question is: um, <laughs> What would be your ultimate favorite horror movie to watch on Halloween? Oh, thank you, Rob. Come on, the you're great gonna, question, Kayla. Hmm? Yeah. Wait, Kayla, Kayla, are you still there? I don't think. <laughs> yes, she is. Kayla, what? Where are you from in Pennsylvania? What? I don't think she can hear. Hello? 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 Hello?
Hello? I don't think she can really hear you. Okay. Yeah. All okay. right, don't worry about it. So, so let's answer so, the question. But, so thank you favorite, for the phone call. Thank you, Caleb. So favorite movie to watch on Halloween? Mm-hmm. So my favorite Halloween movie is Trick or Treat. Yeah. Which a lot of people haven't seen, but it's so a, great. Yeah, it's uh this uh what's the director's name? Doherty. I'm he did uh, Doherty. Oh yeah, what yeah. Did he, just he did recently? Godzilla, King Thank of Monsters. Right. So Trick or Treat is way better than Godzilla. King of yes, Monsters. it is. Not that it's a bad movie. Yeah. But uh, it's just uh, it's it's so good and funny and scary mm-hmm. and um and I hope we get a sequel someday. And it's kind of like a in like six stories, six different stories interlocked. Yeah. Um, and it's very Halloweeny. It's like you get to see a bunch of houses decorated and like it's it's kind of like east coast ish yeah uh, like throwback so to, to salem feel so yeah. I, I love it so much who has no answer for this yeah no the lake yeah. house with keanu reeves i was trying so again my sister-in-law and my my uh, wife last night were going to watch a movie but this didn't happen because the baby didn't fall asleep for a long time i keep calling the baby she's two but um but anyway they were going to watch either halloween together or the it. original? Uh, yeah, the original. Because they had watched the, the, the new one mm-hmm. that last time she was in town. So By it, you mean the it, the movie. The new one? Okay. Yeah, no. yeah, the, Not the, the miniseries. Fir- no. The 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 first the first H-F movie. Uh, yes. The one that came out two years ago. Um but they just didn't get into it. And I was heavily pitching it. I was like, it's the better it's the better of the movies. It it's, is it's just, it, it, because it's and that's not to say that you, you can't make that movie. Obviously, if you don't. If Halloween doesn't do what it did because Halloween became just an iconic film. But mm-hmm. for, it was it was very cheaply made. Obviously, mm-hmm. it it is still has some horrifying moments. But it, as a it, it, you can, it it's it's dated. It is dated. It's dated, but it's still awesome. I, but I love it. When you, it, it it's, it's awesome. It's yeah. an awesome Halloween. Movie. The first about. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the I'm original. Just saying, That's but, mine. But it, That's what I watch to, every like, Halloween. I, it's just hard to compare when you put the you know next to what it. It to me is one of my favorite horror movies all the time. Really? Yeah. Because it's. It, I mean, I like. I really much enjoyed it, but it's. I feel like it was more like stand by me yes, feel than horror. Yes, that's why I liked it. You know, and uh, it because and again, it could be because I'm desensitized. But compared to other movies that have come out recently, it just I've wanted it to be scarier. And that's fair. Uh, I liked it because I didn't necessarily think it was super scary. There were a lot of creepy moments right. in it. But I wanted to watch uh, my biggest problem with horror movies for me for a very long time. And I think that it's had a resurgence over the last like five or six years. Horror yeah, we've films. had a lot of great horror movies. Great yes. horror movies. But my biggest problem with them that it was the they would lean on the same shit scare tactics and, and, and no character development and just yeah. slasher film of the of the month. Well, and the popular ones. Yeah. That that was what was mm-hmm. happening for for a long time, and there were certainly smaller ones that were doing different things. But for the for the mainstream stuff, um, and then when like Conjuring came along, and and especially it, it's layered with character development. And the first one, um, right. and the second one's fine, but the first one I loved. So that was the pitch. You I know made. what movie I got forced to see on a date uh, was Paranormal Activity, the first one. That oh. movie has has messed my brain yeah. up forever. The third one's even creepier. Is it? The third yeah. one's great. I love the, the second one actually. Really? I think I think the third one's the scariest. One. I agree, and yeah. I also like the mark uh, marked ones. That was fun. I like mm. the I like the franchise. Yeah. Really, I would put in that list that Collider made. I would put Paranormal Activity three over the yeah, first one. I agree. Sure. I, I enjoy that one more. I didn't think the first one was as scary until towards the end. Yeah. Go back. You want to watch the third one? No. No. All right. Let's take. Thank you. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that'd be fun. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Adam from Georgia. Hello, Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. What do you got for us? Um, I have a question for you, Christian. Sure. I'm a big Schmodown fan, and I'm just curious why you guys don't ever put the uh, uh, the challenges into the matches. Like you always cut them out. You mean the actual like uh, the deliberation? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be a good uh, uh, idea to get like uh, some some. Some thought behind what the players are thinking and why they're challenging and all that. Well, we do we do put we do put why they challenge in there. Like normally, so, well, the challenge is because of this, and then what we do, normally happens. And I think what we're going to do is because I have a whole bunch of road. By the way, sent me a whole bunch of equipment. Some of those are like loves, and I want to mic up the judge next yeah. season to have a conversation. So it's something that we're discussing for sure to do it. It's just the way that it's. I mean, people don't understand the miracles that. Thad and Cody and Christian and RB3 and and, and Adam. Everyone, Adam and Brandon, everybody that I'm leaving out, uh, the the team does. Um, they, they really pull off a miracle for the live shows and everything too. So and Alex, uh, so we're we're working on doing more things, but I also don't want to overbear the crew with, with certain uh, with certain things. But having next next year having them mic'd up is something that we're thinking about doing. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm excited for the uh, the draft you guys have going. I think it's a really cool idea with the trades and everything. Thank you. Yeah, we're um, looking forward to that. Let's go really quick. Uh, I'm a big Miami Dolphins fan. We're going to kick your ass tonight. Let's yeah, go. good luck with that. Dude. <laughs> 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 Thanks for the call, my man. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, the draft is coming up. That's going to be exciting. Going to be able to do that. Hopefully, you're in town for that, too, because I think uh, ESPN's. When is it? It's in January. I don't know if you're Maybe. Be, maybe. Because uh, you're perfect for that. Um, kind of well, they it. can draft me with that. Oh, like no, I'm saying you it. help, help oh. be a part of it, like yeah, ESPN yeah. style. And then, obviously, the Schmodown Spectacular. Is December 7th, downtown LA. December 7th, please get your tickets over at the schmodownlive.com. We added uh, 12 more general admission tickets. I don't know if they're still available because I did it the other day, but it, go and check. There are maybe, there might be some left, but go and check the schmodownlive.com. But the fan expo is still available. Get to meet uh, the all the schmodown competitors that are competing that day, plus other people that will be there. So the schmodownlive.com. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Or, uh, this is Jake from Pennsylvania. Hello, Hello Jake. Jake, Jake Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania coming in hot today. Yeah, what do you got for us today? Uh, did not expect to get through. All good. What do you got for us today, Jake? Um, I'm just wondering, do you think Marvel is going to be able to keep doing it again with everything they've done? I mean, <laughs> Endgame is so good, I, I don't know if they can keep doing it. Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a great question. Jake, I mean, clearly from Philadelphia area. <laughs> actually, Lansdale. Where? Lansdale. Lansdale. That's near Philadelphia, though. Yeah. Eastern part of the state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like my brother-in-law. Uh, look, this is it's it's definitely going to be a big task to for everything that they led up from Iron Man leading to Endgame. They established characters. They did all, they did this storyline and they ended it uh, great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even had a nice little tie-off with Spider-Man, mm-hmm. right? So now the goal is to establish brand new characters, new um, heroes for us to enjoy, to get us to that place that we're going to have another build up mm-hmm. in another 10 years, whatever it might be. Can they do it? Sure. Is that tough to do? Absolutely. Um, I think that if you want to be a pessimist, it is easy to do and to say it's going to, they might get their first, you know, bo- I don't want to say bomb, but uh, unimpressive film in they this stretch. They might hit the canvas for the first time. In this stretch. They yeah. might not get knocked out. They might get their first solo. Yeah. But yeah, they're also yeah. doing a bunch of different things, and similar to what you were saying yes, uh, yesterday, earlier, it's been a long show, uh, earlier about The Mandalorian, right. right? And so so if they're focusing now on Disney Plus series, uh, so and that, it looks like that's where they're taking their franchise characters, their big ones like Loki and, and Wanda, et cetera. But uh, I'm excited about Blade, right? right? I'm excited about these characters that are coming back more so than, and I think that's going to be successful. I think uh, the Doctor Strange sequel, yeah. I'm very excited oh, okay. about, right? So, so, so kind of the characters that haven't been involved in the franchise as much. Well, they, I have, think. they have options now, for sure. They have the, their main characters like a Doctor Strange, but they do have Disney Plus now, is what you were saying the other day, Josh, that they, it used to be that, they, well, they were doing their own thing on, whether it was Netflix, Marvel stuff, or Agents of Chill. Now it's all in one family. It's all, not one family, but it's all, it's all connected to one tissue now. Mm-hmm. So they have more opportunities to tie it all together, but it's just a matter of who's, who's telling the story. Feige still telling, help you know, getting the filmmakers, putting the things together. So we'll see. Um, I think that they they have the opportunity to get us all hopped up again. But I think it's about ten. You got about nine to ten years before we get to another spot. Like yeah, this. we're like we're resetting. It's, yeah. this is yeah. like when a, a team wins a Super Bowl, they lose all their stars, and they have to go back and rebuild from a draft. That's, exactly that's where right. we are. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the call. Uh, hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? This is Mark from Pennsylvania. Hello, what Mark. What the hell's going on today? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania in the house. All day long. But yeah. What awesome. up, what's Mark? Up? What's up, Mark? What do you got for us today? Hi, how you guys doing? Yeah, what's going on, dude? <laughs> you hanging out down there? Where you, where you hanging out? That was like seven that's different that. accents. No, that's Pittsburgh. You don't know Pittsburgh. What's up, dude? Where are you from and at? I'm in West Smith. Uh, oh. dude, West Mifflin, go Titans. All right, all right. <laughs> what is that? It's a Pittsburgh accent. Get your head out of your what ass. Is Come that? on. Mark Yins know what I'm talking about. We got Monday night tonight against the Dolphins. We bring hot Mason Rudolph at the gate, 21 nothing before halftime. I'll be drinking an iron. Dude, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. Fill them sandwiches with French fries. That's how we do it. This is what I just heard. Bleep, bloop, blah, blah, yeah. bleep. This is like yeah. when I first watched Snatch. And yeah. I had to exactly. like figure out what they were saying yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's whenever I brought, watched British If you British don't shows. know, you don't know, you I dumbass. Don't know. So what do you got for us today? Well, uh, I'm a uh, Masters of the Universe fan. Awesome. Last I yes. heard, there was talk that Sony may sell this thing to Netflix. Yeah. I don't know if you had any more info on it. 
I mean, that's the last we heard about it. Yeah. I think that what they're probably going to do is to see how this Kevin Smith thing does with Netflix, right? And uh, see what the what the demand is, and and they'll they'll also be realistic about it because animation's not going to pull the same audience as a live action thing does, but it does have Kevin Smith's name. And also, Shira is amazing. The, Shira is the, really the good. New, the new cartoon is really, yeah, really good. Yeah, but yeah, that's still not enough for them to say, okay, let's put all let's let's put all our eggs in this basket. I still think that they, Sony should just sell it all together, get rid of it, give it to another studio that, that wants to take the shot mm-hmm. and and know how to do this thing because like they don't know what they're doing. They saw Thor Ragnarok. Let's make it like Thor Ragnarok. And then they had David Goyer. His idea when I, when I had a chance to speak to him, what his vision was it was more so what we were looking yeah. at. They don't know what to do with it. They have no idea what to do with it. I don't know. If if Netflix is going to be the place that they put the money into it and they and they get it done right, but no no news uh, as of yet. We'll see. I'm they should about make it. a Skeletor movie, a la Joker. <laughs> After they establish Masters, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, yes, you're on Skeletor. Dancing Live. Yeah, Skeletor. I was yeah. just say Dancing yeah. Skeletor. So hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? Hey, this is Seth calling from Salt Lake City, Utah. There you Hello, go. Seth. Salt Lake. Oh, what's going on, Salt Lake? What do you got for us today? Um, just, you know, calling in, wanted to, first of all, you know, starting out, I know a lot of people have been starting out, thank Christian and Josh for everything they've done on the show. You got it, man. I'm um, excited for your future endeavors. Um, Josh, I actually, I was going through a tough time a few weeks ago and reached out to you, and you gave me some really great advice. I wanted to personally thank you for that. Hey, man, thank um, you. For a really tough time in my life. Um, you guys all have. I mean, this show, it reaches to so many people, and. I think I speak for a lot of us when I just say thank you for that. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Jim. Thanks for that. Yeah, you got something uh, you want us to to hit on today, or? I uh, just kind of wanted to call in and you know give you guys that shout out. Thank I you. actually also, um, as far as like stand up comedy goes, I'll say um, you guys have inspired me to actually get up and I've started doing open mic. Good nice. man, nice. Five good five for you. Point, How's it been going? It's killer. Good. Um, I love it. I I really do. The first set I did. I bombed and I loved it. It was a great experience. <laughs> yeah, everybody I'll t- but I'll, I'll tell you what, though, I'll tell you that's that's a good sign, because there are people who, and I can tell you, there are a lot of comedians that will try for the first time and they can't handle the bomb. Mm-hmm. They don't love it at all. They hate the feeling of it and they quit. Mm-hmm. If you can handle the bomb and you like it and you can learn from it, then you got a shot because that's that's what that's what a real comedian does. A real comedian will get up there, you'll get hit. And you'll say, I mean, I remember I just played Martini Lounge one night, mm-hmm. and I had gone up, and I just ate a big pile of shit. <laughs> and I said, and I, it was devastating because I was having, I was having like really great sets, yeah. up, and I had never felt anything like that uh, before. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is terrible. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is now I understand why this is like a drug because like when you're really high mm-hmm. and you're having a great time, mm-hmm. yeah. but when you're on your low, it felt horrendous. But you said, well, then I said to myself, I said, there's there's two things you do. Here you go. Well, fuck this. Or you say, "What did I do wrong there? What was the?" Because you can never. This is what I hate when people go, "Well, that crowd was terrible." It's not, the, it's not the crowd. The crowd very well might have been terrible, but you also have the opportunity as a comedian to try to figure that crowd out. Mm-hmm. Not to say you will, but you have the opportunity to try to figure it out. It's always about how do you how do you connect with that crowd? Like I know that it's it's you don't want to bring this person up, uh, but. One of the things I saw about Louis C.K., when, what I will say, and I'm not talking about the shit that he got, he, he did some fucked up shit and he was horrible. You can separate talent from the, the, people the, doing He did horrible, things. horrible yeah. shit. But what I will tell you is this. At, it was one in the morning at the comedy store and they asked the guy to go up, and this is before all the shit went down, but they asked him, he said, they said, do you still want to go up? And he's like, yeah. And there may have been eight people in the, in the OR. And it might have been 800 people in the room because he connected to every single person. Mm-hmm. That's just what... A great comedian can do, mm-hmm. uh, and again, like you said, separating. I'm just saying that there are people. Dave Chappelle is another example. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just using that example because that's who I saw when he did it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just have to connect, and you, the fact that you could read the room, you could read the fact that you didn't do well, and and make a, a, an example out of what do I do next is good. Mm-hmm. There and there's a couple of decent comedy clubs in Salt Lake City, so he's yeah. he's in a good yeah. spot. Awesome, yeah. man! Thank you so much for the call. Uh, let's do one more, and then we'll call it a day. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? This is Adam from Texas. I uh, just have a question. Uh, this Saturday, Masvidal versus Diaz. Who do you got for that showdown? Or for oh, the baddest shit. motherfucker? You know, to be completely honest with you, I mean, it was it was so funny. This is MMA or this is, is MMA okay. UFC? So I, 
at one point, I like I know you knew you might have known this before you knew me, but I when I wasn't working, that's how I was making my money. In like two thousand six, two thousand seven, I was betting on UFC fights mm-hmm. because back then it was still it was you'd get great odds mm-hmm. yeah. on and and people didn't understand UFC the way that it is now. Right. Um, and I was connected. I mean, I was I. I'm connecting as far as I was always paying attention. I knew mm-hmm. everything that was going on. I'm not as tuned in anymore. I, mean, I know, obviously, know Diaz from from uh, a lot of his fights. Obviously, for the the most recent with Conor McGregor, but uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with his opponent. But what I you can never count Diaz out. But uh, yeah, I, I I can't. I'm not going to pretend that I know more about it than I do. Who do you got? Well, I got. Uh... I got Masvidal on this one because if you haven't seen his last fight with Ben Askren, that five-second knockout, right. the best knock- I feel he might start off like that, but Masvidal is just an I mean, uh, Diaz is just an animal. The way he defeated Conor McGregor, yeah. but I don't know. It's going to be a great. It's going to be a great scrap this Saturday. Well, there's no doubt about that. Those both. I mean, Nate Diaz, the both the brothers are just they're scrappers. That's just the Stockton kids. It is they they scrap. That's what they do. Um, and I think that you're absolutely right. You never know with him. You never count him out. He's he's a vet. But yeah, that five second knockout was amazing. It's just whether or not is that lightning in a bottle? Can you do it again? But um, yeah, we'll see. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. I never it. really got big into UFC. I was never. I mean, yeah. I. It's just like I, it's not. I'm taking nothing away from either sport, boxing or UFC, whatever. I was always way more of a yeah. boxing fan than I was UFC. But uh, like every time I've been to a UFC event, I don't follow it. But it's always fun. It's amazing. Have so you've been to just UFC events, not not in general, like other MMA events. Uh, no, just UFC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I, not Bellator yeah. or any of the no. uh, like the, the Asian ones. Like I was a no, massive no. boxing fan for a very mm-hmm. long time. I actually transitioned out of being a huge boxing fan to be more of a big UFC fan mm-hmm. because I was so frustrated with the way boxing was run. Boxing right. was run because there were t- WBC, WBA, IBF, and they're all crooked, and they don't. Ha- and there was not one particular organization that said, "All right, this is our champion, and these champions have to fight. Right. The champion has to fight number one." That's what UFC did, and I said, "Oh, I like that structure. Mm-hmm. Like you are the champion, you're fighting that person. You're not negotiating for all this stuff, and it's a little different now. It's happening more so in UFC, but." That's why I responded to it more. You knew who the contenders were. You knew who the champions were. You knew if that person fought that person, they would get a shot. It was set up in a way that that got me on board. And it's I didn't lose my love for UFC. I just lost my schedule. Yeah, no, so yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's just a lot to yeah. keep up with because yeah. it's grown. It's grown so much. So like great. I started. Like I, I when Fedor retired was when I started getting interested in it basically, oh. and that was a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> but even, even back in the day, like the original UFC, there weren't rounds. Remember, like Ken Shamrock and, and Horace Gracie they were, they were like, yeah, like they just laid on each other. Yeah, well, that was that's why. Again, why I got better. That's when the, when it, when it was bought over. Yeah. They installed the, the rules because Dana White was a boxing guy. Yeah, he was a boxing guy. That they, they, they were, these rules were were changed for the best with the three rounds, the five rounds, all that. But anyway, uh, look, that's the show. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much, uh, Walter. Really appreciate that. Um, please get your tickets for the Schmodown Spectacular on December 7th. The ShmodownLive.com. We will be there. I want you guys to be there, too. Thank you to Josh McCoop, Mark Riley, Thank Karina, you. Mr. Cody Hall. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. Four shows left. Make sure you stick around with me this week, please. I want to end it with you guys. So uh, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow.